Welcome to Back Talk. Back Talk, episode three, podcast, radio, all that. <laughs> <laughs> we back, y'all. We see it's your boy Ray Van. Okay. C Rich. What up, y'all? Jump right into it. Okay, what you got for us? I ain't the captain of the yacht, but I'm on the boat. I ain't acting what I'm not, knowing that I don't. You niggas acting like you will, but I know you won't. Man, I read between the lines of your eyes and brows. Your handshake ain't matching your smile. Who's you know it? what I know. You know I know. <laughs> so let, you know I don't know. You know I know. Don't ask me. Really? You know I know. Look, you can't keep doing this. <laughs> you gotta put him in like a hip hop. No, you can't keep doing this. Be like, it's not, you can't keep doing this, Rich. We all, all right. know. Okay. This Rich, could be, you, give me your best guess, because just think about who, who would say something like that. You know, so many rappers out here. My cadence should have gave you like a, a um hint, though. Like, who raps with that, like, cadence? I mean, I don't think you know. I don't that. know. I don't, I don't even tell you. Yeah. But you a Meek Mill fan, too. Oh, he just gave you a crazy I gave you a clue. hint, my nigga. So. I know that. That's Ross? No, it's not Ross. Oh, okay. You tell me. <laughs> what is it? Just think about the rappers from Philly. No, no, no. You don't know anybody nah, from just Philly? Tell me okay, I'm gonna just tell you. It's Benny Siegel. Man, come on, man. Come Y'all people know, know that. Come on, Siegel, man. Come on. No, I don't know that. Get out of here. Benny Siegel. I come think on. whatever lyrics C. Rich doesn't know, he got to go home and listen to the artist. Yeah, we are gonna make you. Right, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Benny Siegel. <laughs> Benny Siegel. Benny Siegel. Was Probably. that the '90s? Why you like that? It was like 2001. It wasn't the last ten years. I'll give you that. You were how old? Five, six. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. We're going to have to give him some uh, Soldier Boy land. <laughs> <laughs> some some Yang Yang Twins or something. Yeah, right some, some uh, Shop Boy lyrics. Hey, man. Got right. Party like a rock star and shit. Okay. And shout out to everybody listening who got it before we told y'all who it was. Yeah. Big up to y'all because I ain't get it. So but look, we, we, got a, we got a great show today. Great show. Um, damn. I, I'm excited because... We gonna be talking a lot of we we you know we get into our entertainment news we get into um you know social issues but today we, it's a real balanced show and you know we are gonna open up first of all because you know we in Atlanta so I think everybody know the hashtag that was going on Twitter on Facebook like everywhere okay. everybody was what talking was about the it was it was I I eighty five collapse yeah right okay. and you know just over here where we used to work. Um, I don't want to get too many details, but we used to work. <laughs> <laughs> Meet myself and Rich used to work over uh, near that location. Rich yeah, is still over there. I'm still over there. Yeah. yeah. And it's like Lindbergh Buckhead for y'all who don't know. Yeah, yeah. over by Lynn, not too far from Lindbergh's Mall. Right? I right. travel that route every day, mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah, and uh, actually, yeah, it, the fucking bridge collapsed or, or the highway collapsed. The overpass. Hey, exactly. good thing nobody was hurt. That's the main, main concern. Were they, though? Nobody was hurt. Allegedly. 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 allegedly, allegedly, I'm thinking would have came out by now. Some people went missing. Uh, I mean, allegedly, I-85 collapsed I mean, due to know how the alleged do it, crack though. use. Allegedly, we throwing a lot of allegedly out here because we don't know what the I fuck don't happened. Know what happened. Hey, right. right. So, for those of you who may be unfamiliar, which I don't know how, so essentially there was a fire that was up under the I-85 uh, overpass. Now, 85 was like one of the biggest highways, and it's part of the country, and it's a main highway in Atlanta. So it was like what rush hour time, like five, six o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And it was a fire up under the bridge. And what's funny is like I was on a train which passed right through the smoke and I'm like Googling on my phone, like, what's going on? Like, why is this not on the news? Cause it was a huge right. blaze of black smoke. Like it was crazy. And basically, long story short, within a few minutes, it was all over Twitter, all over the news. And then like within twenty minutes, I think, that everybody was saying how the, yeah. the road collapsed and they literally shut the city down. Like that's a main role. A lot of people don't actually live in the city. There's work in the city. Like, it's commuters, it's a lot of commuting in right. Atlanta. So, it was like, I won't say pandemonium because nobody died, allegedly, but just, allegedly. allegedly, like, people were just in shock. Like, how did the road just fall out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, how is it just gone? Shout out to the Atlanta drivers because, you know, I'm one of them. <laughs> just stay in y'all lane on BMI. We won't have no problems. What? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, it was crazy. So it was all over the news, and everybody had these. I think before it officially came out how it happened, it was like, oh, nuclear this and terrorist that, and like right before that, wasn't it like a story about like somebody like has that? Like it was an issue right before that happened. So, I mean, you know, based on what, uh, everything that we know, 
you know, the info that we have. What they tell us. The, yeah, the brother, uh, what is his name pronounced? Basil? Oh, yeah, Basil. I seen that. I seen that. Yeah, Ella B, uh, allegedly. Man, they just want to arrest somebody. Yeah. Put a blame they, on I mean, They have to put the blame on somebody. Because I'm, I'm thinking, how do, how did the flame reach so high? Because even if, <laughs> even if, I mean, it, it's on a brick, it's on an overpass. That right. overpass, is, it's not low sitting. It's right. It's pretty high sitting overpass. Mm-hmm. And supposedly he put a chair on top of a shopping, shopping cart. cart. But my thing is, who was watching all this and didn't say nothing? I was. I, I flew by under there a few hours before that. So, I mean. So, you was under the overpass? No, I mean, the bridge. Because, you know, I got to get to work. You know, going you down Piedmont. Yeah, I ain't seen nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't seen nothing. You gave him the dope? I mean, but it'd be homeless <laughs> people up under that bridge all the time. So Right. I mean, and they were saying they were transients or, like, alleged cokeheads or something like that. I don't know. Okay. So, I mean, they could have well, been getting high. You feel me? We don't know. All I know is, you know, the very next day, mm-hmm. I was in my workstation. Oh, I love it. I was uh, too. not too far from me. You know, it's you know, certain a little bit of distance from it, but still Atlanta. Still Atlanta, and I was sitting at my desk, and for some reason, you know, I heard a a big ass <laughs> shake. Right. You feel me? I'm thinking, okay, Atlanta got earthquakes, so this is a terrorist attack. What the right. Fuck going on? Right. And you know, the building shook at least like three times. It, it shook that at one least. strong time, and at then least. it shook a second it time. It was multiple and the third. shakes. <laughs> so I'm like, everybody ran to the window, want to look at what's going on, and I'm not running to no fucking windows. I don't know what they y'all stopped acting black that day. I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> I'm not running to a window when I don't know what's going on. So I'm looking at the doors. I'm looking around, and I just know like some may right. I'm, right. I'm just saying, and, and the official story was that there was a AC unit that, that fell, fell above us, but yeah. an AC unit that shake a whole building. Right, it don't even sound I don't like it. it. Don't even sound so. like because everybody in the building heard it. Everybody was typing about it and sending out little uh, emails, instant so. message, text message. <laughs> right, it was to the point where like um, Ray and I both work actually in the same place. And I literally, I had someone on both of my lines on my phone. It was enough for me to literally, like, take off my headset and jump up. Like, it wasn't just, like, a subtle, oh, okay, something happened down the street. It was, like, everybody still has the residual, you right. know, anxiety from what happened before, the day before with the fire on the bridge and not really knowing what the cause was of that. So I grabbed my stuff, and I was headed out the door. <laughs> like, right. I, I was like, I'm not waiting around to see what's good. And um, so that just kind of shook us up. It's been a little bit of a crazy uh, week here for us in Atlanta, but we good now, right? I mean, are we? I'm well, straight, man. Exactly. Boston still rolling. Serious, like, I don't know what's up. I'm still about rolling. <laughs> don't stop me. Shit, but what, what that actually, what all this actually got me thinking is how prepared are we for, like, a government shutdown or... You see what happened when the snow here. And, you see what happened when the snow here. Yeah, we saw. But <laughs> how... Like, I'm looking at certain things, whether it's, you know, the fact that we as black folks, and I'll talk about us specifically, but, you know, as a whole, you know, studies show that, you know, one in third of adults are either obese, uh, two and three are overweight or obese. Okay. And so, how prepared are we physically <laughs> oh, and health-wise? Man, come on. I don't think you about to say No, no, no. And then also, you look at the fact, like... And, and again, these are statistics that I pick up. It was like a 2010. This is back in 2010, but you know, it said that black people as a whole, as a group, 49.5 percent of black folks are either overweight or obese. So you worried about Wait, how so physical, physical ready? How prepared are us, uh, us as a people? Are we okay? If we we're not taking care of ourselves physically, mentally. You know, health wise, because if you look around, like I and not to, you know, because I'm not even. Hey, shout out to all, shout life. out to all the vegetarians out there. I'm a vegetarian. Real talk, you could be an obese vegetarian, but go ahead. You can. Hey, it's too you, much. You'll be a, you'll be a healthy obese vegetarian. Wait, I'm trying to understand Ray Bans. So you be fat and breathing saying, clearly. Are you hey. asking how prepared? <laughs> are you saying our hey. preparedness goes hand in hand with obesity? I'm saying that that's that's an indication that we're not ready. We're not prepared for. Okay, you look at Ray. we gonna get we gonna get deep real quick. Ray. So we look at stretching. We look at you these militia the groups. Oh. We look at oh. <laughs> these white militia groups, and they're right, training bro. daily. They're out here. They going to the gun range. Oh, they doing right. MMA. How right. you know we ain't in the gun range? We ain't in the gun range. We on the we gun range in the, in the hood. Gym. We not hey. doing martial arts. We not. Shout out to my boy G Set at three hundred five. 
uh, Granger. Uh, he been trying to get me to do the, the the martial arts shit for like damn near three months now, and I still ain't. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get with you, bro. We're gonna be in the gun range. We're gonna be doing the martial arts soon. But I mean, I'm looking at the fact that like in all of this, in all seriousness, like we're in a we're in the age right now. We're in the era where we have Trump as president. Anything goes. Yeah, that's right. And true. these people have been waiting to really like not necessarily start a real war or a civil war, but they've been ready to put some work in on black folks and, and people as a whole who are not who are non white. So we have to be a little more serious in the way that we go about things. I know, like, we do an entertainment show. We, you know, we, we have fun here, and we also want to educate. But definitely one of the things that I thought about, you know, doing the whole incident is how prepared am I? I'm doing self-reflection, so I'm not just saying, Right, because you know, I know some of our listeners are probably like, how did he get here? So tell them how you connected the two. Like, I mean, for me, so I'm looking at the fact that in that moment of the building shaking, right. I-85, if we don't have nowhere to go, if all the stores shut down, how many of us know how to grow fruit? Right. How many of us know how to, you know, do for ourselves without... Are self-sustainable, right? We're not self-sustainable as a community. So uh-huh. I'm saying, if not Trump, if not these catastrophes that happen, you know, sporadically, right? when, if all, are we ever going to, you know, take the initiative to do for ourselves and become self-sustainable? I know that there's outside forces. Right. There's, you know, we, we have we have forces against us that's trying to stop us from doing those things. But, you know, when are we going to take it upon ourselves to, you know, do the things that we can do, whether that's eating better or whether that's <laughs> exercising. Get, at get out get at C Rich. He does a, he does running hey, every morning. Every morning. Really? Yes. Where where you run at? I run running? in my neighborhood. What neighborhood is that? Hey, put my business out there. Hey, come on, they watch but no, for real. You run every morning yeah. too. Yeah, how morning. far do you run? Uh, two to four miles, depending on two how. Two to go. four, probably gonna be like a mile, mile and a half. Two to four miles. So let me ask this question. So we have Rayman <clears throat> is basically talking about how prepared are you? And I'm in the gym like every day. No cardio though. No cardio. No cardio. I'm in that gym he ain't gonna go day. nowhere. He ain't gonna go nowhere. I'm sweat- yeah, I'm gonna I'm be out of breath. Now, I'm gonna be out of breath. But if I can get you in that first ten seconds, <laughs> if I can break you in that ten seconds, I'm good. Okay, but no, seriously. So I have a question. So Ray Van is asking, like, how prepared are we as a people? Now he's not just talking about being physically fit, although that does play into. He's talking about right. how are you eating, how prepared are you, what's your game plan if the structure, whether that's governmental, whatever, if whatever you're used to just breaks down, everything that think about everything that you rely on somebody else for, whether it's your paycheck, your food, your transportation. Like, are you able to do all those things on your own? And then we have C. Rich that's basically saying he runs daily, but my question is, do you run daily for health or you run so in case some shit go down, you can be able to take off? All of it. All of it. Always <laughs> got to be ready. Above. Always got to be ready. Without disclosing Come too much now. info, my boy is, uh, he on that. Yeah. He on ready. He on, yeah. he on <laughs> ready. Just right. Know, got to. So when was y'all going to clue me in? And t- you got MMA over here with you, Ray Ben. You I mean, got I Reddit. Okay. Hey. I was supposed to be a fan. It's something you learn. Yeah, we, we, we talk, yeah, talk about it. That we is y'all you know, too. I'm saying, right. your girl. I, mean, okay. I want to be all ready. Like, we'll put you on. We can. I'll right. right. get you straight. So I guess for the listeners, like, are you guys doing anything? Like, not to say D-Day is going to be here like tomorrow, but... As y'all know, like, look at history. Who is to say history won't repeat itself? Or, you know, that just some shit may happen where you have to be able to get yourself, you know, to the next point or just protect yourself or whatever that may be. Like, what are you guys doing? You know, I would love to hear, like, if y'all could just, like, chime in and drop comments because that really woke me up. Like, seriously. Like, yeah. when the building was shaking, that's, like, figuratively speaking, my foundation was shaking. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, even when I went home that day and they hadn't, like, disclose the cause of the fire because everybody was saying oh terrorist is or like mm-hmm. somebody crazy and i'm at home by myself my entire family's in another state most of my friends are spread out throughout the city and i'm like i'm literally sitting here i almost felt like a sitting duck if some shit was to go down right you get what i'm saying Ladies, so i'm like keep a man in your life no Amen. keep, keep. <laughs> anyway moving on uh, <laughs> so um my it kind of woke me up like okay even if i did have a dude because what if he's not in your presence what if he's across the city at work or out of town on a trip like what can you what are you able to do for yourself to one protect yourself Stay you know strong. get where you need to go like i was just like damn it really woke me up like what am i doing to uh, so you're saying I need to <laughs> strap season 
Yeah. No what's happening. No, you're right. Though. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Florida, but moving here to Georgia, I said within a year I would go ahead and get licensed. Unfortunately, I have kind of let that slide, but mm-hmm. now they kind of remind me, like, okay, you need to be on ready because, first of all, without this even happening, y'all already know the, the kind of life that we live. We have to be on ready daily anyway. Right. But if someone, like, ran from my house or if I'm on my way home from work, like, I commute a lot, like, what am I going to do outside of my physical, you know, capability? What am I going to do? So you know, it just gives me. you something to think about. Like, I'm just saying, like, I'm sharing my own feelings and thoughts. What like, would you do? Maybe, well, hopefully we won't have to find out. But, I mean, that's that's literally the question I'm harming. What would I Lucky do? April, April 1st passed because I would have got children. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, ladies, like, look out for yourself. Like, think about what you're doing. Where is your health at? Like, you know... How are you protecting yourselves? I mean, I keep stuff in my house that just in case something go down, even if let's just say I have like a guy friend over, like I make sure I'm prepared when it comes to stuff like that. But the what stuff you got? You, a bat. Listen, I may have, <laughs> you know, somebody I'm dating maybe listen to this. I can't let them know what I got. Shout but out to <laughs> <laughs> but oh, that's the stuff you see coming. Like when you in the presence of a guy, not going mm-hmm. on, on a different subject, but you like, okay, you no, already have a... That. You already have like a certain mindset, like when it's that first date or the first encounter, like I don't know how this is gonna go, this is gonna be crazy. But you on ready. But if you just home, you know, having a bottle of wine is eleven thirty PM and you somebody coming to your house. <laughs> yeah, drink, <laughs> candles, incense, sage, all of that. Um, and somebody coming into your house and let's just say whatever you quote unquote have is upstairs, but you downstairs yeah. and it's like fight or flight. Would you be able to fight? Would you even really be able to run? Right. Like, you know, it's just a very vulnerable position to be in. So it just gave me a lot to think about. Right. Not to, you know, put too much fear into people, but, you you know, you got to, it's reality. It's the reality of what we live and how we live today. Like, we just got to, we got to be ready for whatever comes. So, right. you know, for me, my big thing, you know, I've been in the gym a lot, but I got to get on my cardio. I know I am. You know, so you could be somebody down, but you can't outrun them. Is that what you're right. saying? That's okay. So I'm going to stand and fight. That's but terrible. Right. You're going to tire yourself out. You're going to tire yourself out with and, that and, no cardio factor. I mean, Rich can speak for it. Uh, my, my shot is pretty good, too. What if you can't well, get to his gun? got nothing to do with that. My shot pretty Man. good, too. What if he can't get to his gun, though? That's what I'm saying. I guess I'll die then. No. I'll die on my sword. Oh. Like a G. Okay, so see, Rich. So, I mean, not putting all your business out there, but do you feel like because of what you're involved in, that you kind of involved in, that it gives you like a stay ready mind state on a daily. Oh you yeah, feel of more course. Than of course. Than I do. I definitely you do. Do, that's do you I feel the like... obligation to share that with the people you love and know, though, or do you just keep it for yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. Mm. Mm. Yeah, like, look out how, for the team. Yeah. Mm. Do you like? Do you reach? Do you try to teach people some of the tactics that you learn? Or I mean, some of them. Like you, some of them you're supposed to just you can't put out there. Well, not the can. lethal stuff, but just stuff. Some to things be you can, yeah. If, if you can help somebody out, yeah, share it. I'm you know, saying like your that. girlfriend, your mama, your brother. If I they do. ask, I think it's gonna be like, hey, blah blah blah. Why, why, not, though? why hmm? not? Why not? Should you not though? Because you're the leader, basically. They gotta I'm, look to you for that, right? You're right. You're right. They don't come to me, but I mean, if they ask me that, then yeah, I'm just not. It takes a village, see, Rich. Mm-hmm. Hey, you right. <laughs> they know. Just they know. messing with you, but no, I think that's good. Like my, it used to be crazy. Like my dad. He has a um, military background and I think other stuff in his background I'm not sure about. But when I was like a young girl, he was always teaching me these tactics. Like mm-hmm. literally, like if you on the street and a, a van pulls up and it don't have no windows, do this. Yeah, well, you, you should always be aware. Stop. Yeah, you should always I be aware. I want you to go ahead and go into what you're supposed to do. I, I mean, <laughs> oh. that's just like that's just like many people don't <laughs> many people don't realize. But when you sit down in the restaurant, you're always. Well, I sit down where I'm always looking at the door. Just never switch your back to the door. Right. So That's whenever I'm with thing. my friends or I'm with my girl, I always make her sit on the other side where I can see what's going on right. just in case. Right, right. A lot of people don't know that. Subtle things like if you're in a bedroom and for whatever reason you go into bed with a guy, I always find it admirable when they make sure like they're closest to the door. Like a lot of dudes don't know that. And it's like how you're mm-hmm. trained. And not to say they can't get to you, but it's the mentality of they got to come through me first. Yeah. So just stuff like that, like, you know, you take for granted, but literally if shit goes down, it could be the difference between life and death or harm right. and no harm. You know what I mean? It's so, all about awareness. Stay aware. Yeah, you got to stay aware. And I used to think my dad was crazy. Like, he was teaching little moves to do and, like, stuff like that. If somebody was ever, like, attacking me and stuff that I still remember, but now I get it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, he's been through some stuff and he's been in positions where he had to kind of defend himself that luckily I haven't. But he knew, so he embedded these things in me as like a little girl. And I'm talking like 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. 
And now that I'm an adult and I see shit for how it really is, I'm like, now I get it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So. It definitely was back to the band thing. <laughs> <laughs> If ever you are you kidnapped, this van go. If, you, if you ever are kidnapped, do not ever, 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 ever let them take you to the second scene. What you Fight mean? for your life. Don't. What's the second scene? When they take you from the first, from the scene of the crime to the first, to the like wherever they're trying to take you. Yeah, wherever they're trying to take you the first time, and they sit you there. If they ever try to transport you somewhere else, that's the scene where you. Hell, I'm not trying to get to the first. I'm just saying. I'm just letting you know. So fight or flight at that point. Yeah. Don't ever let them move, transport you nowhere. Don't let them take you. Don't let them take you. Yeah. So I mean, we may sound a little bit like we're doing too much, y'all, but life is real, and there's somebody out there that probably wish they had thought of these things before they were in the position they were in. So I think this is worth. You know, take a martial arts class, ladies. I mean, gentlemen who know stuff, tell your homegirl. uh, You know. Mm Your girlfriend, just little small mm-hmm. stuff. Y'all be giving the top secret training stuff that you true, know, true, but just true. the stuff that can make a difference between. Right. Like my dad will always say, when you see a lot of women when they come out the store and they go to their car, they're fumbling with their keys. They got like their door open while they're doing stuff. Like mm-hmm. I was always taught, don't do that. You go to your car. If you have something to do, okay, get in and lock the doors. Then you do what you need to do. If that's if if you can drive off first, don't fumble and get on your phone and stuff because you're a target. If you head at home. Have your keys ready. You get what I'm saying? Like, just a little stuff like that so Oof. you're not a target. And now that I'm a, yeah. I'm a single female, that 90% of the time outside of work, I'm... You don't have to be single. Okay, and I'm, it's not... A, <laughs> it's a choice. <laughs> That's not what this conversation is about. Choice. What oh, I'm saying is I move around I the city a lot okay. by yeah. myself. And it's stuff like that that, that I may not even know could, could have saved me, you know? Right. So I just think it's important. Like, even if somebody's not asking you, how do I protect myself? If you love that person, like that person, you right. interact with them, take it as your responsibility to be like, hey, like, I noticed this, you should do this. Or, hey, do you know about this? Because it literally can be the difference. I mean, you got to look out for each other, right? Right. True. You know how to load a gun? I do. My dad taught me how to shoot a gun. See, who told you how to load a gun? Told myself. Oh, you told myself, bro. So I didn't. I, I had didn't... some um outside training. Okay, before, some you know, outside. You feel training. me? Sorry, I didn't teach you. Nah, you did. Okay, nah, you okay. did. Okay. <laughs> it's not like a little discrepancy going on, but yeah. So I mean, we had a crazy week, and it made us think about some things, and hopefully, us talking about this with you guys will make you think about some things, and we just gotta look out for each other, y'all. Because at the end of the so, day, it's us. We can't depend on the government, the police. The neighbor, we have to depend on ourselves and hopefully exactly. people who love us to do what we need to do because at the end of the day, that's what matters. Stay safe. Absolutely. Black lives matter. <clears throat> Not going to go there. We're anyway, okay. <laughs> speaking of hashtags. Uh, hashtag tie game shit. I'm sorry? <laughs> I said hashtag Tiger H. That was a hashtag. That I was mean, going. it just makes it sense to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. To speak on that, because I, I I'm not too familiar with the story. I know a little bit about. I kind of gave up on the story to be honest. But <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, she she's thirsty for attention. So Ooh, she from my really? from my understanding, for what I've been like noticing about this whole story, is basically. This is random. She's on a random rant on Snapchat right. about you Which know, she's allowed to do. You right, she yeah. is. She don't have to though. But, but she can. I mean, okay. let's, let's okay. be honest here. A random rant about Tyga, Kylie, Rob, you know, calling Tyga gay. Right. Saying, but what know, makes what money. makes it random? Because you hadn't heard about it for the past week and she's I like, mean, to no, me, she just posted random, on Snapchat random. randomly about it's this. Random. Like, I'm looking at it right now. It's just But that could be her everyday life. So it ain't random to her. It's just she right. finally decided to share it with us. You get what I'm saying? Okay, you, but okay. why even make something like that your everyday life though? That's negative. Like, Who's number one. And, and let's be honest. Okay, she she's uh, a former stripper. What so what Shout does that have to do with anything? What about the former stripper? Strippers' jobs to be slightly deceptive. Slightly. Only because they have to lie to dudes all the time in the club. And then on top of that, I mean, seeing you have to post on IG, I had to get some things okay, off my chest this, this can morning. You, can no, you, let's I see mean, which finish what she posted. I had to get some things off her chest this morning about Tiger or whatever. And then it's just like okay, nothing but just rants. Um, I don't understand. What, what, what do you need to understand? Why can't a woman just rant because she feel like that's ranting? Unnecessary. Why does she need your permission? Especially about your, your kids' if she father. Was, if, she your was kids pra- father if she was praising Tiger, if she was now. praising Tiger, y'all would be like, oh, yeah, that's what's up. She can express yeah. herself. Okay, but my thing is, y'all, it's the freedom of expression. Whether right. I'm expressing you a fuck boy or I'm expressing Damn, you love my life yeah. and you the greatest dude ever, I get to express whatever I want. So you don't, you can't True. censor me just because you don't like what I'm saying. Look, but, it's not about censorship. It's I think about that's what tech. It is. And I feel like whatever situation you got between your your baby father, your 
whoever, your baby mom, even for dudes. I, I don't like when dudes be going off on their baby mom. I don't mama either. Keep that between that, y'all two. Like, come on, now, we want to hear that. that point, you're making, I agree with that. I don't like how so you you're, oh, you're oh, oh, my God. When I say your baby mother shouldn't be denigrated on, online, but you you feel like what she did she was okay? Me, what word was that? She denigrated. Oh, okay. S-A-T. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't get me on my T.I. shit this early. So, no, okay, I, let me let me say this. Yeah. If Tiger was doing that, would you be saying the same thing? Right. Y'all have to think about who you're talking to. Okay. Who so, are you, who are I always see to? two sides to every situation. Right. On one hand, I completely agree that a woman should be able to say whatever she wants, however she wants, when she wants, whether that's to somebody sitting next to her or on a social platform. What I disagree with is bashing any type of black man on a public uh platform so, so i can get how it contradicts i'm just saying hey she i don't feel like she should do that but i'm not gonna tell her she can't do that do you understand the difference in it no i understand okay no i'm not gonna let that slide okay don't. we gotta build in order to build a community we gotta have codes of how to that's exactly what how i just we said interact. I okay just but said i don't so don't even take the don't take her side on this don't okay. even say okay. Hopefully, y'all listen. I just what I just said. No, I got. Oh, what yeah, I understand saying. too as well. But Fuck it, but they shaking their heads and being looking at me like WTO. This is my thing. Mm-hmm. No, you should not. Yes, I believe in keeping like Lil Wayne said, keep the drama in the roles. Like what's going on between me and you, and like whatever with our relationship. Like yes, put it behind closed doors. I agree with the. I agree with that. Like everybody shouldn't be in your business. But you have to put it in a context. This is Black China and Tyga, right. who their career. <laughs> Would you leave the stripper part alone? Go ahead. The point I'm making is, in recent years, their fame has been associated with basically expose, like just right. knowing their business. Right. Yes, she was a stripper and everything else, and yes, he was a rapper. But what do we know him for? The association with the Kardashians. The Kardashians are known for their money is letting people in their business. So why are we talking about this? Girl? We're I don't even want to talk about the Kardashians. Really you know, I, I We're don't. talking about this because I feel What's like people... I think the deeper issue is that it's a whole bunch of ain't shit baby daddies and, you know, she's just speaking on her particular I one. I don't... Look, I don't want to turn this into... Shout out Harris, to all the fathers out there taking mother roles. Because I think there's, there's, there's studies that are showing that black men are more active in their True. Um, child's lives True. and other groups. Right. But let, let's... But... I'm not bashing black men. There are one, there are but no, I don't want I don't want this show to turn into a black because we have a lot more topics to go. Exactly. And I don't want to make this show about that. Because honestly, it can turn into that, you know. <laughs> but, shout, you out know to, shout out to the black men that's out there taking care of the responsibility and Thank uplifting you. their kids and their women. I know you exist. Thank I'm you. simply speaking on what is being presented to me, which is black China outing or allegedly outing Alleged. baby da- daddy on social media, and that's how I feel. Because look. And, and you know, because I don't know Black China, she could be wonderful. She but you keep mentioning person. how she's a stripper. Like I, that means I'm something. joking, but okay. you know, but okay. yeah, people change. Some, yeah, people change. But let's be honest. Or not. She was. She's in the news a lot about you know her relationships and what she does. I mean, she has Rob a TV Kardashian show. TV show shit. based off her relationship, right? So I mean, and she, then y'all talking she's about why is she doing? For his, for his it's her brand. Yeah, that's exactly. the only point I'm making. That's her brand. Okay, well, that's fair. Okay, and tie game shit. How is Tiger? We don't know Tiger. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just we don't kidding. know Tiger. Hey, man, I'm, I'm tired of people, you know, I'm throwing kidding. shade on my man Tiger like he wasn't the shit he, back he in the day. Really good, he had Come a really on now. Good he had a run. Y'all said had like the man's done. So y'all essentially are coaching. He's not done. Some shit like that I think when he got with, uh, what's her name? Kylie? Yeah. That's that's the one? That's his boo. He messed up. He should never did that. That was the end of his career. That was the end of his career. I ain't going to say no more. I mean, he was his career was kind of dwindling. He could have. He could have came back. Never too late. Well, can we talk it's about another late. black couple then? Since y'all don't want to talk about Let's the better. the Kardashian step people. Who are next? So, Ti and Tiny. Mm. Right. Ti, shout out to Ti. Shout king out to Tip. Still king of South. Shout out to Tamika. Still my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, they are allegedly um, going through a divorce, and um, people have had their things to say about it. And then there was a recent. Revelation of um, him having a possible new interest, and people right. came at her online. So I'll let you guys talk about it. How do you feel about, first of all, the divorce? Do you think it's real this time? Because you know they always fake. It could be for them TV ratings, but I mean, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. 
I feel like this. You think it's real? Yeah, I feel like this for this kind of. Why now though? Like all the what's the difference? All the years, right. I feel like you know. You done been in jail for this man, right. like come on. Because These I mean, kids. sometimes you get tired, man. Like you like, know, relationships they they. So you think they time is just ran out on for them? Like yeah, yeah. it could just ran out, you know, and maybe he just he just want to upgrade. So you think man, it's an upgrade? Come on, man. Look, I, hey, why is it an upgrade? I, I don't want Let's to get do into this. this. I no, think you do. Uh-uh. Tiny is no. a, it's a perfectly Because I done heard this too many times. I done heard, hold on. I done heard this too many times. You, about, from everything that I've wait. heard, <laughs> Tiny is a nice woman. I done heard this too many times. What you heard? For T.I. to be such a successful man, why he with Look. Tiny? Let's be Do honest. you not know that Tiny was famous before T.I. was? She was yes, an upgrade for him? Yeah. Actually, as far as appearances go. No, wait. She held, wait. She held T.I. down. Wait, no, for, seriously. Yeah. Before y'all knew who T.I. was, she was in a group called Escape. Down. Yeah, I, I've was, heard about that. I've heard, I, I'm not saying that she was naked. broke. Oh, I ain't say broke. You said for yeah. appearances. I'm talking about appearances. Why? He's talking about He's talking about in relation to how does T.I., somebody who... No homo. He's a he's not a dude who not would struggle no with getting females. females. You get what I'm so saying? So he's walking around with tiny. It, it, you no know disrespect because I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. have a problem with tiny. You it's, said tip would struggle getting females. I said would would oh, yeah okay. would. All right. So you look at and it's she like, done had all these surgeries, <laughs> man. Like you know. And so I, to be fair, look, 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 I'm gonna be fair because look, for me, if I was walking around with tiny, and I for me, it's not even like just appearances. It's the fact that. She wear all this makeup. All these she, surgeries is killing me. All the surgeries and the and the the, the paint, you know, getting her eyes. You know, uh, yeah, she know had exactly like surgery yeah. for her eye. Like it's just too much going on and has I it, wouldn't I has wouldn't it not occurred to y'all. But has it not occurred to y'all? Go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt, but just wanna mm-hmm. insert this in there. If she been with this man this whole time mm-hmm. and T I is a known step router, we'll call him that. And allegedly. In the beginning of their relationship, she looked one way. I'm Nearing the end of their relationship, she looks mm. another way. Has it not occurred to you that these women that we've seen him mm. with, that you've been cheating on her with, mm. she's trying to look more like what he seems okay. to be cheating on her for, and that's why she's altering her eyes, she's altering her body. Mm. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just saying, don't look at it like, oh, she walking around all altered. Well, maybe if her man was faithful and made her feel beautiful, she wouldn't feel like she had to do mm. all that. Now, it's not his responsibility, but just think about that right. as, a, as a possibility. That's what I'm saying. So it's not his responsibility to do that. I think you should, though. I, whether you feel like... So for me, like, I don't have a problem. I give my woman props all the time. Mm-hmm. But let's be honest. Can we be honest here? She not... We should be nothing but honest. She not... She not a dime, so it's... What does that have to do with anything? You going to be loyal to a dime? When we look at most successful Wait, men, Wait, pause. Can you only be loyal to a dime? When you look at most successful men, and you wouldn't lack a certain level of like you wouldn't look at him kind of sideways if you seen him walking with, you know, a chick that was kind of, kind of homely or a two or three or. We we I'm have a silence for this. <laughs> <laughs> What, are you, what point are you making? I'm making a point that, as men, I, I would say for me. Say it. If I'm looking at somebody who's successful, I'm wondering, okay, you look at all these You're basically people, saying that that girl that he, please that, that's going to be with him, she should be bad or match the no, level. No, no, no. If I'm, I know that if I'm looking at somebody like in that situation, she was with him before the money. Okay. She held him down. Held He's him really down. just with her. Cause, Cause of that, yeah, basically, because he, he kind of feel bad and shit. Yeah. Like, damn, so it's a pity marriage. It's it's a pity marriage. Hey. That's exactly gonna, what you just said. Because he could love that woman. Like he, yeah, he can still love her. Yeah. He, he yeah. may not like my word choice, but you essentially just said it's a pity marriage because you're saying mm-hmm. that he's with her because she was there in the beginning. Which means, I would say. Yep. But I feel like <laughs> I feel like yeah. I mean that's true. But I feel like at the same time he probably still love her and shit. Bottom it's line. not about love at this point. It's about loyalty. It's about honesty. Right. It's about trust. It's about commitment. Love don't mean a goddamn thing. We know that. Right in marriage. Love so is then, love is a is a like undercurrent. I need right. you to be more than loving me. I need you to respect me. I need you to commit to me. I need all of that stuff. So we ain't talking about love. We know the love is there because it wouldn't be together. Can we this stop? Long. Hey man, he PC. said he ain't mind giving her money for alimony. PC. So I mean, what you mean playing PC? So you you as uh, a. Uh, uh, Respected or <laughs> successful man, if he walking around with goddamn, we'll flip the script. Khloe Kardashian before the surgery, 
You mm. telling me you wouldn't look at him like, the fuck is he doing? No. I hate when people look at people. I'm, well, I'm not first of all, first, you are, you're working off optics. These women, this woman that Remember you Remember we with, had a show talking about <laughs> in the beginning of a relationship? We don't know nothing about this person. We're working off optics. Optics. Correct. So you mm. telling me you won't base your decision on appearance? You didn't ask for my decision. You asked for my judgment. No, 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 you no, no. You asked for my judgment. That you brother said, was I see a couple. 75 pounds away from where you wanted him to be, and you shut him down. So you telling and you know me, what the so we're not doing And you know what the difference the is? We're going to do facts. The difference in that is dating right. versus a marriage. If I'm dating, I get to, before all the commitment and the love and the trust and honesty, yeah, I get to be like this versus that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know how I look. You know how I everything. Mm-hmm. You're married to me. We've been together for almost two decades. Mm-hmm. This is this is a whole different conversation. So, yeah, we talked about that. But we're talking about me dating. First date at mm-hmm. that. And we have no... We, I don't, we have no obligations with each other versus people who've been married for however many years, dating for however many years, got how many kids, them been through jail, flop albums, and so everything it sound, else. It sounds like, who flop albums? I'm just, well, not flop, but you don't, know what I'm don't be disrespectful. <laughs> mm. I'm a TI fan, don't do that. that but my point I'm making is you comparing two different things. I'm not. I'm how not. Is your we're, we're talking about a relationship. A relationship. You're still working off when you first. Maybe missed. I missed the question. What are you asking me? You said I'm, you you asked if I see a man that's mm-hmm. of a certain caliber with a woman that's of a lesser caliber. You're saying you said, oh, you're not gonna judge that and be like, not Why lesser. With her? Let, let's be honest here. What are you asking me? We're talking about a man with a far lesser caliber. So you're saying the reverse. A woman that's like, let's just use numbers for the sake of argument. A woman right. that's a ten and a guy that's a two. Is that what you're talking about? Even that, you wouldn't look at that female and be like. What, yeah. When I do see situations like that, I think about the internal. I'll be like, okay, yeah, I go to that too. Yeah. Amazing sex. He got bank. Hey. He <laughs> no. got he because uh-huh. I've seen it happen. Right. I've seen he a, got money, correct? I'm saying what I would consider. Uh, he had money, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, that's <laughs> all we wanted to do. So we're know. talking money here. We're talking finance. Marriage you is see about how finance. Man take the piece of the conversation. The brother Ti. He, he made a power move. He made. <laughs> He made a move for the what was best for his partner. So tiny with the power move. And he he might have How does that justify what he's doing now? I'm saying that the money is right. The money was right. She held him down. He looked out. He a stand up. He seemed like a stand up dude, so So he looked out. So it means that he can fuck around now. That's what you're saying. He probably been doing it though. He he has has. he has the right. He's just okay. Okay, okay, okay. Damn. The money is right. So, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna talk to Sirius because I'm about to hit Ray in his head Damn. twice because he on some foolery right now. Sirius, my phone just blew. Up. Don't do that. Sirius acting like he don't want to talk to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> do you hear what your boy's saying though? I hear, but like I mean, this is my thing. Like shut okay, up, shut up. <sighs> no. <laughs> you know what? I'm exhausted. I don't want to talk about this no more. But basically, I just feel like we know he's been cheating on her since whenever, but whatever has kept them together. But she probably has reached, you know, her boiling point, you know, right. and that's just what it is. And I think it has nothing to do with her altered body hmm. and whatever it, y'all want to put it on. We don't know what, why, but I, I hate to see it because they've been together so long. Yeah. And they right. had they the TV good. show, Honestly, like the little family vibe. They, they, they do look cool. good together. And I like I like them as a couple, but can we talk about Mary J. Blige? Can, can we talk <laughs> about her continued failures in relationships? I would like to do okay. a relationship <laughs> seminar where I invite women who continuously struggle in relationships. Who are you to be that piece Ooh. of women? <laughs> Let's talk about your relationships since you want to impart wisdom. What relationships? I don't know. That's the point. Exactly. Exactly. And that's how it should be. <laughs> Oh, don't worry God. about what your man got going on. Oh, but I want you to know. Don't worry about what your man got going on. I, I want you to know. Do y'all hear this? I want you to know. What Mary you want J. Blige. And, and I love her. I love Mary J. Besides the little uh, Burger King commercial that she was cooning on, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have a problem with Mary J. But I look at, I do, in all seriousness, we do have to have a conversation about. We're looking at the fact. You know, if somebody continues to have relationship issues, so you say it's a woman. Okay, I'm not saying it's a woman. We're saying for her particular, because uh-huh. it could be the man too. I can look at a man if he's say, always having a problem with is relationship. Is it her? Is it could be her because of her mind. So if you're looking at the music she makes, it's a lot of depressing shit she used to make. 
Because I'm so right tired of these relationships. I feel like every time... Okay, you don't have to be quiet on this. We can talk about this. Go ahead. I'm just trying to listen to your point you're making. Okay. You said she made depressing music. Go ahead. Okay, so she's making, you know, emo music. And she about to come out with an album? Is she? And it's going to be bomb. Because no, she's going through she going through... See, and that's my point. What is your point? Her, everything, her success was kind of based on, like, kind of like how Keisha Cole uh-huh. was making, like, these heartbreak songs and sadness Because guess shit. what? We can relate to that. Understandable, but if you always stand in that state of mind, How you and maybe she's not, maybe, art. but her art puts her in that state of mind. She's an artist, correct? Are you blaming her music for her divorce? I'm saying that for artists who base their music on that type of subject, you do have to kind of draw from something to get have that. Have you not heard her last two or three albums, which is why people are saying they haven't been that great because she hasn't <laughs> been on that sappy shit? She's and she realizes on... that, right? What she realizes that based on her response, from okay, the music. right. So why is she returning to that place? She hasn't yet. We think she is because of what the voice she's in. The point you just made is if you if you put a certain energy out mm-hmm. as an artist, right. you have to know that that energy will affect your actual life. Right. She has been married to this man for about ten years, and right. actually for the last shout out to Kendall seven to eight years, she's been on some oh I'm happy I got right. my man music. So what are you talking about? Her art has reflected where she thought she was. Mm-hmm. So and she it was wasn't on, it wasn't four one one it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't all oh, that. Yeah. So what are you talking about? <laughs> her saying, art was positive. Hmm. Kendu, shout out to Kendu because he got his little hustle on. I mean, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I My man got his pockets laced. Came up. He came up. He's trying to get, get his manager. pockets laced. No, he got it. When y'all get it, Sam, I just want to shout out these numbers he's asking for. Go ahead. Crazy. Go ahead. All right. Eight thousand dollars, private chef. A private Ooh. chef. Thirty-two hundred dollars, personal trainer. He already Ooh. said. Thousand dollars on clothing allowance. Allowance, five thousand dollars to continue paying his parents each month. Those not her Ooh. parents. Seventy-one thousand rent for rental properties. For what? Five thousand dollars a month to support his two children from a past relationship. Those aren't her kids. Twenty-five hundred. Not help her. Continue. Oh, Twenty-five hundred auto expenses Those and transportation. Cars. Five thousand seven hundred and eight dollars maintenance and repair on his property. Should maintain properties. her heart. Fifty seven hundred for groceries. Who eat that much? <laughs> Twenty one thousand for charitable donations. I mean, is it really charitable if somebody giving to you? This whole thing is charity. Go ahead. Yeah, ten thousand dollars for entertainment, gifts, and vacations. Like entertainment. One hundred thousand dollars for attorney fees. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And thirty thousand dollars for our county fees. Count your own money. Mm. I mean, he ain't got no money to do what it looking like. It seems shit. like Kay has a problem with this. This is my thing. And let me tell you, when we were, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. I'm gonna, when we were discussing these topics about what we want to talk about today, one of my co-hosts, who show her name, Nameless, was like, we should talk about, should men get alimony putting up with y'all bullshit? That's what was said. So. <laughs> the listeners won't even believe that because that doesn't even sound like any man. It, that's that's yeah. what was said. So I thought about that. So, whenever there's a breakup, I think we always assume it's the man, right? And it's not always the man. It could be the woman, but I actually Correct. just watched Mary J. Wise's interview on The Breakfast Club. and you she. Don't know her. But this is what she said. She was like, he is in love with somebody else. He did not want me anymore. He was like, right. we literally tried, and we had a conversation. It right. wasn't like this obscure, okay, why are they breaking up? He literally was like, I don't want you. I want her. Oh, yeah, so, to the me, physical it wasn't even there. Right. Okay. It's very black and white. Like, we were married. We were together. Oh, I don't want you. I want her. Right. Why in the hell am I giving you something? You still benefit off me, but you don't want because me no more? Because business-wise, he helped her get money. Yeah, he was her manager. So, and, even, and you already got your cut. Uh, yeah, he, you have. He ain't necessarily already get his cut. But uh, presumably he has. That's what contracts are for. Okay. Mm, yeah, that's what contracts are for. But also he helped her help elevate her financially. Let's go with that argument. See, right. Rich just ran us a list of a whole bunch of non-business related right. stuff. His parents, his cars, Correct. his groceries. What the hell does that have to do with Mary J. Blige? Nothing. He got to live. He got to survive. I mean, Basically, yeah. with this with this divorce, that takes listen, him out of a job. Listen, so you think he should more? Okay, who made more? The manager or the artist? The artist. Okay, Mary J. Blige made more money. Percent- Managers wait, wait, wait. get a Mary percentage. J- okay, I know. Mary J. Blige made more money, right? Right. In court, when the woman breaks up with the man, a lot of times they get alimony. Why? Because that man had been taking care of that woman for X amount of time, so that was required. Exactly. Because that person has to sustain themselves over the course of their... They want to maintain the lifestyle. Right. I got it. 
So why you have an issue with that? This is because not maintaining it, a lifestyle. No, it is. It is. That man is used to living that lifestyle. So when it's a man, it's a problem. When it's a woman, it's, it's not a problem. Let me ask Reach. a question. Because he, no, no, no. Because how long have they been together? See? 10 plus. 10 plus? That's alimony. You get alimony off top. So why is it a problem when a man wants alimony? Can we speak on that? Go ahead. I want to give you the floor. <laughs> So for me, it's not a man woman thing. I have a more of a, I guess, modern way of thinking. I mean, mm-hmm. I believe in chivalry, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to these objective things like money, we can all agree that um, marriage and wife is an upgrade for Kendu in the way of lifestyle. We're not talking about optics, just lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. She was a millionaire. And so for me, okay, you should be able to go back to the lifestyle that you were living. You shouldn't have to maintain what you had with me. If the details are yeah. that we are not together because of something you did, that's why you have a prenup. Where I mean, if we break up because of some, oh, we just ain't. There's always and, a reason why people break up. Exactly. Listen, but listen exactly. to what I'm saying. I think the details matter. This is my answer. The details matter. Man to woman, woman to man, details matter. If I, let's just say we're on the same playing ground, right? We both had the same amount of money when we got married. But we get a divorce because. We're not talking about that. Okay, let's go with the scenario yeah. it is. Mary J. Blige, a millionaire, can do eyes, it's just. Is okay, but not in the millions, right? right? The details of divorce is Kendu effed up. Kendu had a harem of women, and he literally told his wife. But that why was he doing that though? It doesn't matter why he did it. So the point oh. is, he, the point is, he did it. So the, being that we are breaking up because of your effery, you don't get to maintain this lifestyle because you are the reason for the breakup. So I feel like if it was a woman, if it was a woman who got upgraded by her marriage. We're only breaking up because of your foolery. You don't get to maintain it. You lost that part when you effed this up. Okay. So for so if a man goes to court and says, "Look, Your Honor, I still love her, but you know, she, what does love have to do with it? I told you that she no, no, no. She what? We don't. We're not able to maintain a relationship because my wife doesn't really care for me like that no more. She kind of shows in her attitude. Gotcha. Yeah. So he should be able to not have to pay alimony. Because of the treatment she gave to him. Isn't the details? Are you saying okay. that the love is gone? I know that because Let's she, say she's texting niggas. Just texting? Oh, so it has to be like It's levels for this shit, yes. Let's say she cheated on him, so she shouldn't get alimony. Damn right. right, she should be left with nothing. So, so the kids and her. I'm not saying no alimony. I'm saying back to whatever lifestyle you had before me. I'm okay. assuming okay. you weren't so there. She, so if she was broke, she was broke. She can go back to her broke status. Yeah. yeah. She should go back to being broke. If it's just her, yeah. Okay. Now, nah, no, no. Kids. no. Kids. What they no, got? So should, the kids don't got nothing to do with her. Kids and then if she's a sole right. caretaker of those kids, listen to what I'm saying. They was married. If she's a no, okay, no, but that's not the case. What these kids with Kendu, they weren't in home. Kendu got grown like kid, like older kids. These right, ain't no right. babies. So to me, if they weren't in our house and experiencing that lifestyle, no. If How they you know they in weren't the in the house, house? How you know they weren't staying? Because they're grown. One of, the, one of them is on the show. Like they're grown, grown, and they show her house. Like yeah, she has her they own. They used to it too. They got used to it. They, they can perks. be using her the, funds. The perks in the lifestyle is a different thing. They Look, have, let me get you off the hot because I ain't trying to do all this. Okay. Like, Honestly, I feel where you're coming from. I know we plan, but in all seriousness, like I, I, for me, I have a problem with not necessarily alimony as a way. I feel like if there's kids involved, you should take care of your kids. I have a problem with the fact that we kind of have this set standard and structure of, okay, when a man breaks up with a woman, that man has to pay. And that's not right. But not the right. woman, usually when a woman breaks up with a man, it's not even it. It's like an afterthought, and if that man asks for it, y'all look at him like he weak. Now, I wouldn't personally, if it's me, I'm not asking for alimony because I'm going to get it how I live. That's just how That's I am. Pride. That's how, it's not pride. Like, I just feel like I don't want nothing from you. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we came together on, on a, if we came together for a relationship and we so part ways, like, I don't want, I don't want nothing from you from that relationship. We left with who, we left with ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Like we all we have to leave with is the memories that we had and we gone. Okay. So yeah, y'all, hold on, hold on. So if y'all came so in a relationship. I, no, no, no. Hey, so, yeah. so if y'all came in a relationship or whatever and y'all started a business or right. you know, you was making no money and then the mm-hmm. business started booming. Y'all was making millions. Yeah, so how so you, we have a business That's why you have so contracts. Okay, so but what you even saying? with contracts. Like, contracts you'll lead a business, you'll lead a business to her, or you gonna Would I leave a building yeah, business to yeah. her? It depends on what it is. So 
See, it's, it's all talking, the details. Y'all it's, going back to what I'm saying. Right. If it's bat talk and I start bat talk with my girl and the shit blow up, it was my vision in the first place. I'm not finna See, just, that's why you have a contract. I'm not finna just give it up. But, you know, mm. you know what I'm so, saying? So, like, Ray-Ban's boo, future boo, make sure you get that shit on paper because he gonna leave your ass stranded. Go ahead. No, I'm not leaving her stranded. I'm saying if you just he, said he it said, was your no, idea. No, a business together, right? You yeah, a business, business together. But what, is, what was your response? It was my yeah, idea. If, it's, if it was my idea for the business, I'm not going to just give the business up. We're going to split that shit. Oh, so it's going to be a split, even it, though it's going to be business. something. It's going to be something. I don't I'm know. Just I, leave that, it to her. I, I feel you, but at the same time, like if y'all coming together with a business, how y'all going to find? See, y'all got to have a. Y'all y- about that, therefore, y'all got to develop a, a business relationship. The business in this situation was Mary J. Blige. It ain't no business. It's She's the artist. He was managing her. Their business was Mary J. Blige. So we, right. we can go off on all these. Hypotheticals. We talk about Kendu mm-hmm. and Mary. The business was Mary. He married Mary. He fucked over can Mary. So he don't get nothing right. from Mary. Right. Okay. Well, can we talk about? She probably wasn't showing him no love. Mike Shout out to Kendu. Get your money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? So you know Mike Epps going through a divorce as well. Shout out to Mike Epps. I um, can't talk about this. Michelle Epps. He no, has wondering was... eyes. I don't care about. It. See, again, we, we get into some stuff that don't have nothing to do. So, what's your question? What point are you making? So, Michelle F. She's asking for one hundred and nine k okay. a month. Okay. In that proceeding, she said because she can't find a job. Okay, I, I can understand that. The man's been taking. Woman. Yeah, mm-hmm. if she's been taking care of for a long time, that's cool. But on top of that, she's asking for, and I want to, is it three thousand a month for a nanny? Mm-hmm. You don't have a job. Why can't you take care of your kids? Can we speak on that? Maybe she got daily interviews. She I don't want to hear that, to man. To Costco? This, this is what I'm talking about. This is hey, about? yeah, this we, too much. Like that's excessive. She don't need all, what you need that for. So can do this wasn't excessive. No, nah, it wasn't. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> no, nah, it wasn't at all. That personal trainer. We were just we talking need about that. We need that. Clothing allowance. Yeah, I mean, that was his life. I mean, that was we his lifestyle at the about, time. We gotta get ready for this the. the you for can't the go from wearing designer to, so to nothing. I mean, I feel, I feel what you're saying. You want him to be assed out out here? I don't give a fuck what he doing once he's not with okay. me. Get your so money, we can't see do. what type of men we, we see how K is. You see how I am so, when you fuck over me? Hell yes. Okay. If you out here with a harem and you and you cheat I don't me, know the story, so I ain't gonna pretend like my man. I ain't gonna pretend like my man. My man was just out here cheating. Listen, it's we don't know. It's we don't docu- know. Okay, are we talking about Ken? Do we even talk about Elf? We're talking about both. Yeah. Okay, so we can talk about both. Do but- men deserve alimony for putting up? Yes, sir. With y'all trifling, they do. At- no, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, ladies. Honestly, get your money, man. Don't. Don't worry about what I think. Don't worry about what the men think. If you, oh, you if you taking if you taking care of your kids and a nigga leave you and he got millions and he trying to leave you stranded, I say get your money. I say don't. I say, I say the it should be the matter. only. It should only matter about the kids. It don't matter about her. You're get right. out of here. You're right. But what about money. what about these people who have been together since they was like. 20. It's hard to get back out here in the, in the job right. and shit. It, it is hard. Their so life became your life. Like, they took care of the kids. They took care of the household. They didn't really learn any skills. Now, that is on hey, her. No. Females, that's why you don't depend on no man. True. Yeah, because y'all aren't dependable, true. clearly. But I will also say, damn, like, at some point, when do we start looking at, you know, how much is too much when it comes to these, to the money figures that are thrown out? 109 thousand a month you 35 that's not even for reasonable duties. so Come on. look you you used to a certain standard you used to a certain standard of living you may be look used to a certain standard of li- living but at what point is it too much so you can't go back to you know five thousand a month you can't live off five thousand a month it's a lot of people out here who would kill to have that five thousand a month exactly. you can't live off ten thousand a month and take care of your kids so it's like for me, it's like we have to set a standard to where, okay, is it that we have to sustain wealth for the other person or do we sustain a standard of living that that person can live comfortably? Because you don't need 109,000 uh, 109, to live comfortably. 
by yourself by yourself well, with like your, Kendu, even with your kids like, like Ken do isn't talking about with him comfortably he's talking mm-hmm. about having 10k a month for entertainment gifts and vacations that's, right i don't that's agree with the brother i don't i don't fuck, I, I, I mean not, yeah that's I agree with some of that is just too much that, that's a lot Thirty thousand in, in accounting fees like eight thousand a month to feed somebody and in addition to that the groceries are five thousand eight thousand for a private chef and then so five. That's, that's too much. So you yeah, okay. they you should get so alimony, I agree, but I agree that it's to a certain extent. But we don't need all that. About, are you able? If I say can do, deserves anywhere from ten to twenty thousand a month for putting up with that. That's like maybe three percent of what he asked for. And her depressing ass move. How you know? Music. You don't know Mary as a woman. I'm saying the music. The art and the artist can be two different people. A lot of times it's not. Do we know Mary? Have we met Mary? Have we, Have met we had Mary? a conversation with Mary? Did Mary, Mary, or Mary? Yeah. You know what? Well, it's two sides of the story at the end of the day, so. All right. Well, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's not my money. I wish Mary did Wives the best. I hope this album, I think it's called The Strength of a Woman. I hope we it's going to be the bomb. Blah. And. Really? Oh, wow. Let me stop. She gonna have to have a bomb album to play Kendo can do uh extra thirsty ass, so Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Shit, can we talk about the fact that we were having a discussion. <clears throat> this was a discussion on music and we talk music a lot over here, um, as a group, as a collective, and we were talking about some of the best albums. And one of one of the albums that came to mind was uh I, I was I was sitting at my desk because uh, Kay, you you sent me a message. Yeah, on, I was, on a lyric. What what was the what was the what message? I said was like we'll just send random messages throughout the day or whatever about music and um, toilet Tisha. Those of you who don't know what that is, it's a track from Outcast. It's a song about the girl Tisha who died on the toilet. And you know, I I sent him a message. I was like, dang, I haven't heard this in so long. It's deep. First, he sends me a question mark, like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, are you kidding me? You don't know who Toilet Tissue is? And then we get into a, a discussion about Outcast albums. And I feel like Stankonia was my favorite Outcast album. And then he damn near ran over to my desk. We're going to stop right there. What? Ladies and gentlemen, we have somebody who says that Stankonia is Outcast's best album. I do. Now, that was their Grammy winning album, right? I'm not sure. I just like it. That was a Grammy winning album. That's not even their third best album. Oh, like according to you. That's not even their third best album. First of all, we all recognize Equimini, Bar None. That's their classic. That's their Why? magnum opus. How? Why? You got to have receipts. You're going to come in strong. Return of the Gangsta, Mamacita, The Art of the Storytelling 1 and 2, both of they. Classics, West West Savannah. Do we have to keep going? I mean, everybody knows Rosa see? Parks. So Rosa I mean, Parks. I mean, it, we don't have to really even discuss this, but we will because you brought this up. Okay, let's go. Aren't oh, you didn't know? say liberation. Didn't even say libera- liberation. Bro. Liberation Chunky, is amazing. That song speaks to my soul. It's not their best album. Libation. <laughs> It's their best album. Name a bad album. Name a bad track on the album. I'll let you Honestly, know. I don't think none of their albums are terrible. We're not talking about bad or good. We're saying which album is the best. They were all great it's albums. All Go to goodness. Stankonia. Go to Stankonia for me. Because I, I just want to has Miss Jackson, um, Gasoline mm-hmm. Dreams, Spaghetti Junction, I'll Call Before I Come, B.O.B. We Love These Holes, Humble Mumble. Mm-hmm. All of those. I'm going are... to I'm gonna have to stop you. What you mean? Humble Mumble is okay. With Erica Badu on it? Yeah. Humble oh Mumble is okay. Here. Whatever. I I really can't even... Can you keep going? Are there more? Cause Red Velvet, Cruising the ATL, that was in the loop. Gangsta shit? You cannot... Come on now. Gangs. Okay. Slum Beautiful. And then the Sankonia, the track album. Once again. Hey, my personal favorite is Idle Wild. Shout out to Out of Wild Outcast. You feel okay. Me? <laughs> Shout out to that movie. That movie was amazing. Here's the, the thing. I, think I thought the movie, the movie was overrated. I didn't really it, was it was I amazing. I like the movie. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I think music, you're going to call it your favorite because of how you can relate to it. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. Like, I knew Outcast. I was an Outcast fan. But when I started listening to St. Sonia's, when I really got into hip hop, 
You know what I mean? Like it was like my one of my introductions to hip hop as a true fan. Like I would listen. What year did Steak on you come out? I'm not sure. See, Let's take a look. When does I want to say 2000. like 2001. No, it's 2000. 2000. So I was in high that school. Right. I was an R&B head until I got like in the high school and I got introduced to to hip hop. Wow. So essentially, and you have about like I want to say three or four years. Old. Hold on, you was in high school. Look, we're not this? doing dating. We're not, we're not doing carpet dating here. I was four. I'm saying you were I was four. four. So, to it. so you, this was you the year four. 2000. You just started listening to hip hop. No, I'm not saying I just. I'm saying when I fell in love. That's with when you it. fell in love with hip hop. So let, let me. So let, that's can why I, it's can my I, favorite. Can I say something? Family? What? Say something. So I want to say it was 1994. I was five years. So old. you could not have fallen in love with hip hop. I, I fell even in love with hip hop. You are alive. Around the time when I was watching, because I remember the day Pop died. I oh, remember. I remember this bullshit. Go ahead. Bro, we're <laughs> talking about this, man. So I, I was listening to hey, the listen chronic. Hey, listen to this bullshit I was now. listening listen to the chronic. I was listening to How old were you? I was five, bro. And my, and my, my cousin, you? I thought you was younger than that. You no, was I was like sure? five. No, I'm sure. My cousins was listening to, you know, Aaliyah, of course. Yeah. R. Kelly, all that. But they played hip hop, and I used to be sitting in front of the TV, watching MTV, watching the different uh, the music, the, the box, and all that. And they used to play hip hop. So from I would say from '94 until now, I've been in love with hip hop. So actually, I I have so more authority on. Go this back topic. to what was that first album you said you had listened to, or you were, what was that? I want to say it was either the Chronic or Doggy Style. Five. You was listening to that. I was five, bro. And I and I'm just saying. You were a five year old. What the hell would you have known about hip hop? So hey, that's what, I, Kay, that's what I said. Thank you. That's what I said. What does that I mean, have to hey, do with anything? I don't even you remember when I was five. I don't, I don't you even. You could have enjoyed it. It's not about. I said I fell in love. Do you know it is a fall in love so look, or something? Let, let, me, let me be clear. Exactly. Because okay. the people, they, they're they tired of you guys, honestly, <laughs> of your bullshit. When I was five, no, I didn't understand all the things they were talking about. But what I did know, the beast was fire. I was dancing to a trick in parties, in house parties. I couldn't have been like more than four How or five. How can you call love with something you don't understand? It don't matter if I didn't it understand. Matters. I you, understood you the vibration. See, we, we got to talk about the intellect. There you go. He about to break it down. We have to talk no, about we don't. We ain't got to talk about nothing. How can you fall oh in love God. with something you don't understand? It don't matter. You understand things from, you don't have to understand what they're saying. As much as you understand, it was that feel. Was it that? <laughs> it was that feeling. It was the, the feeling. feeling. Okay. Hip hop okay. give you that feeling. If you ain't never got that feeling, you ain't really. Uh, I know the feeling, and I fell in love with it. As okay, a teenager. you fell in. You fell in love. How the hell you fell in love at five, five years old with hip hop? Hey. Because I'm that nigga. That's not an answer, but okay. He just matured way faster than everybody matured, else, I guess. You were a mature ass five year old. Wow. <laughs> what else she was doing when you was five? I know, but hey. some mature five year old. You say you was at house parties. Yeah, I had. I was at house five. I do at ten. Oh, um, so no, <laughs> no, hey, mama, that say, ain't true. <laughs> did you say direct? We even make direct. Yeah, you plan. Oh, see, you man, know what I'm saying. Plan, so I'm young. Man. So I knew. You know, I know. He was misguided at a young age. What it sounds like. Nah, I was cool. I wasn't into that stuff. But what I, for real, like, protection is always a great thing. But go ahead. Again, stay strapped. Strap season. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, what you're saying is, you couldn't have fell in love. No, I fell in love with hip hop. Okay. And I, in, no, in all honesty, I knew what Tupac was talking about. Oh my god. I was reading at it. Okay, niggas. Thank you, Just because y'all was. See, Rich had it back just from the mic. <laughs> just because y'all was. We were. Let me not be disrespectful. I'm not the know. oldest one at this table, so. I know, but I'm saying like, so at what age did you learn certain things? Because for me, I knew things at a young age because I, I was listening to hip hop and I would go and look and see what it meant. It wasn't necessarily. So you that were researching hip hop. You didn't love hip hop. No, I loved it because it. I loved the sound and I loved with it. The things that I could understand, I did love. Well, you know what? We're going to give you that. You fell in love with hip hop at five. You know, Crazy. I probably fell in love with R&B. That. Cause I could I could relate to that like the smoothness and honestly me I can't even remember half the shit oh, we from know. five Thank years you for old. Keeping it real. I'm gonna you keep it real. I'm gonna keep it 100. You, you feel me? So to remember some lyrics and you know all. What? Wait, did you have a memory loss? I the still other remember. Stuff? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know I just remember. On. I still remember like the Snoop Dogg videos. I remember when Biggie was doing the interview on MTV after Pop died. He was talking about 
Uh, he wouldn't wish that on his worst enemies and all that. Everybody's seen that clip. Right. Bro. But it's not after the fact. I remember this when it was happening. Where you right. was at? I was in my mother's grand, uh, uh, living room. In the room. crib? Yeah, I was in. No. Not in the crib. <laughs> I was in the crib, but not in the physical mm-hmm. crib. But yeah, for me, like, I just remember it's not a matter of having a super. Natural. We gonna let memory. you have it, bro. Yeah, you got you it. Fell in we love believe with you. Hip hop at five. Listen, believe you. Believe you. Your ABCs, but you was in love with hip hop. We got you. No, I knew my. Shout ABCs. out to Sean's memory. I knew my ABCs. I was actually a real smart kid. I just was bad as hell, as you can see. That's what they all say. But we're gonna let you. All right, know. ladies and gentlemen. So I guess Raven's consensus <laughs> is Equimini <laughs> is the best album by Outkast for me because Sanconia just touched me and had me at a certain age of my life. Sanconia is the best. Now I don't think we're saying the other albums suck. That's mm-hmm. not it at all. It's just which one touched us. And shout you know, out to Idlewild once again. Yeah, I don't know about Idlewild. What about? But <laughs> Sanconia was great. So what's your list? Because I got Equimini. I got shit. What else? AT Aliens. So, Southern playlist. Matter of fact, I will put that's number speaker two. Box. That's I number will, two. I will put speaker box and love below ahead of Stank Only all day. Oh, I want to do that. Yeah, I'll I put would. it at four. Nah. The I'll love below four. itself would go above Stank Only. Nah. Y'all tripping? Equipment? I, I mean, I feel no like shit. like Nene said. I said what I said. Who is Nene? <laughs> it's Nene. Nene. You know who Nene leaks is? I don't know. From the Real Housewives? I don't, I don't follow that stuff. All right. Well, anyway. They Shout out the to the Real Housewives. Of Atlanta. Shout out to Claudia Jordan. What? She ain't on the show no I more. I know, but shout out to Claudia Jordan. That's, That's what? Jordan. You like her? Have you seen her feet? I've seen her feet. I remember when she used to be on Fox, so she used to talk about her feet, and I looked, I Googled the picture. And Hold on. What's yeah, her name? What? Her name what? Claudia Jordan. It's a shit. Claudia what? Jordan. So you she dated a woman with feet On like The Price that. is What? The Price is What? <laughs> Price is white. <laughs> um, so you yeah. dated one with messed up feet? Have I? <laughs> with you? Would I? That messed up. Yeah. Okay. Hey, don't, don't let this picture come up. Don't let this picture come up. Beautiful woman. No, put in Claudia Jordan feet. Look at her. <laughs> See, now she ain't. Nah, she no, she is beautiful. She I think you should date one no matter Jordan how her feet look. It's not about her feet. It's about her She was a track athlete. Just to be clear, she was a track athlete. That's why. She uploading. Yeah. She oh said, my God! <laughs> Hell no! Nah. Look at all that. Claudia, 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 let's let's be clear. Claudia Jordan is a beautiful. She's gonna keep her she socks is. and she was on her. Yeah, no. her. The reason her feet was like that because she was an athlete. That's just how funny. much money she making? <laughs> Wait, that she matters. Can't get that fixed? Bro, we ain't worried about her pockets. We don't we don't pocket watch around here. But is she making she making enough money to get them feet fixed though. At the end of the day, <sighs> that was hilarious. Okay, I'm just saying. So. Speaking of women that you love, hmm. Angela Rye. Angela Rye. <laughs> you see how he Angela said Rye. it? <laughs> Angela Rye, if you're listening to this, and I understand that you're single, and I understand that you're having trouble what? finding that someone, I just want you to know. They don't like a strong black woman. No, that's why. <laughs> <good point. laughs> nah, nah. Angela Rye is the shit, man. Like, she it's honestly, if, because one of the things, like, when I look on television, I look on mainstream television. You don't see a lot of strong, not black, because I don't like the term strong black woman. Why not? Because it, it, it gives a, it just gives the vibe that, you know, it, it's a masculine type of thing. Yeah, it's not, yeah. You don't have to be a strong black, just Why as a just black woman, be, have respect yeah. for black women. You don't have to be over masculine, because that's really, wait, there's wait, a high, okay. Wait, you're when people, saying when people say strong black women, right. it has a connotation of masculinity? Is that what right. I'm hearing? Right. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay, go ahead. As a term, because you don't honestly, there's no need to add, you know, strong. Why you just can't be like black woman? Just be a dignified black woman. Then y'all go with child censorship. Okay, but (laughs) let's get back to that because we're talking about yeah, we're we're talking about not all black women are strong. So that's why I think we say strong black. But I think we shouldn't look at it like that though. We should look at it as like what would you consider a strong black woman? Me. Okay, but what about you would make you a strong black woman? Is it the fact that you are independent, or the fact that you can do without a man, or like what 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 makes a woman a strong black woman? I just want to know because I feel like the term has kind of been used over and over 
in relation to masculinity. Right. Well, can I ask a question first? Right. What gives you the idea that the term strong black woman has an air of masculinity? Well, wh- where does it come from? Because you have to... You have Are you going to answer my question? No, I'm saying... I'm answering your question with a question. Yes. Where does it? Where does the actual term come from? I don't know its origination, but I know because we as a people, strong black women, or just black women, period... We have to assert ourselves in so many situations, and sometimes there's like a automatic mentality with strong black women because of just what we have to face daily. So it's like strong black women, strong Listen. black women. Okay. So answer my question: What gives you the idea that the term "strong black women" has a air of masculinity? Because when it's used, it's usually used in relation to what? I don't need a man. Yeah, she independent. She can I'm do her independent. Own. I don't need a man. Exactly. And. I feel like, and that was part, that partially comes out of the the feminist movement who were trying to separate the black men and women and create division within. So, but look, that wasn't the topic that we're talking about. Can we get to the topic that we're talking about? We sure can. And you don't have to, you look upset. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not upset. Oh, so, yeah, so for me, I'm looking at Angela Ryan. She's one of the people who, on television, if it's a, she be, hold, she be her. holding her own. Yeah, I have, I have her own. max level of respect for her. I look up to her. I feel like she's doing her thing on television, much like how Mark Lamont Hill used to hold things down on television. For the mainstream, we talk about mainstream, because you don't see much of that. People who are really, you know, who have some level, it seems some level of consciousness on television, mm-hmm. handling themselves in mainstream movies. <clears throat> so I look at her and what she does on a weekly basis, it seems like. And she's really, you know, she she coming out their net. And I like that. I respect that. I feel like if you're looking at, you look at people like Don Lemon. Lemon. <laughs> I'm sorry? Is that, is that her net? Is that his name? I'm just playing. I don't know. Don, Don, Lemon. Don Sweet Lemon. I Don. hope it's not Lemon, but go ahead. Yeah, if you look at people like Don Lemon and usually most of the people who they put who are black, especially men, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But men who they put on television, it's a lot of feminine type of men on television, when it, especially when it pertains to, you don't see many strong <laughs> men on television. So my thing is... You don't think that's by design? Oh, what's shit. That? You don't think that's by design? Yeah, that's certainly by design. Okay, go ahead. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So looking at Angela Ryan, the way that she handles herself on television, I really respect it. I love it. And I love the way that she came at the dude. Uh, what, what's his name? Okay. Walsh. Walsh. Joe Walsh. 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 Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh was a, a representative over in California. Joe Walsh has made a number of comments in relation to black people. Uh, one of the things uh, Joe Walsh did uh, back when President Obama was elected, he uh, he basically said that there will be a race war. Uh, because of Obama, um, wow. yeah. So Joe Walsh is Joe Walsh has kind of been basically a blatant white supremacist. Okay. For over the last few years, and just recently, he what, what was the comment? He said Obama was held to a lower bar because he was black. Right. Obama was held to a lower bar because he's black, which is a complete opposite of the truth. Right. And everything he did was scrutinized. It makes no sense. Exactly. And so Angela Wright called him on his bullshit and basically said, why are y'all letting a blatant white supremacist come on television and say and tell lies? And he basically tried to backtrack and said, well, you know, I'm saying and that. And then try to apologize about it. Go ahead, though. No, he didn't even try to apologize. He came back and doubled down. After the interview, he came out on Twitter and doubled down and said, just what I said, Obama was held to a lower standard because he's black. Double down on it. So my, my thing is this. Because, you know, we see people like Angela Rye holding it down. And this is one thing I will say in relation to the strong black woman. I have more respect for women like her. And it seems like to me, and maybe I'm just overanalyzing, but it seems to me that there's more black women holding it down stronger than a lot of black men right now and I'm, I, I take issue with We that. lead the movement most times. What you mean? Of course it is. Not mo- I wouldn't say most times but I would say right now especially in take I know the history. I know. You don't have to look like that. 
I'm just saying. You like, I wouldn't no. say most. Uh, yeah. No, I wouldn't say. And there's more women than the, men anyway. So, you so know, maybe it's course. a number of things. But what? we do a lot of the groundwork. We put everything on our backs. I'm not saying y'all don't. I'm just saying we definitely do. We're not going to act like Shout that. out to Angela that's Davis. Shout out to Angela Davis. Right. That's one of the big names. I'm talking about everyday people, though. I'm not talking about yeah. just the ones you know about in your history. Shout out on, to Madam And C. on your... Um, you know your timeline. I'm talking about everyday women. When it just comes right. to in general, we put everything on our backs. But go ahead. Right. It's shout, so out, shout out to Shada 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 Especially when Bill O'Reilly made his comments about in relation to the wig. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, I'm looking at it like, yo, where, where are the men that kind of banging? I see online, it's mostly women who mm-hmm. are on the line banging. I'm looking for the dudes. Like, where, where are the men I feel at? Like, well, I, feel like a lot of, I feel like a lot of them are scared. Y'all honest. are. Y'all are. I feel like they are. That's the only question. That's the only answer right there. So, if you're scared, say you're scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what album did that come from? I don't know. But yeah, what, what tell album? Tell the people. If you're scared, say you're scared. I don't know. You tell me. Oh, that was. Uh, was it a Quimini? Yeah, I, I think that was a <laughs> Once again, with a Quimini, the best album. We, we I didn't say that, that Quimini was a that. shitty album. I just said it was a number one we're off for that. the record. And so, you work. You worked at a big media company. I don't want to say no names of what okay. company it was, but it's on television. And a lot of people watch it mm-hmm. or have watched it in okay. the past. I know I haven't watched it in years. But, you know, don't make that face. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I'm sure, you know, and you working in the industry, okay. music, entertainment, you kind of know or have stories or experiences to share. I do. Um, so... What of all would you say has been the overall vibe when you are in these offices as a black woman working next to, you know, people of you know, of stature? Speak Excuse me. That. But when I say I do, that was I do with a question mark. Because to be honest with you, in the arena you're speaking of, mm-hmm. now my standard nine to five, that's a different thing. Mm-hmm. But in what you're speaking to working in the industry with people of stature, people you said on TV, here on the radio, et cetera. It actually has been great, but I think okay. it's because the company that I worked with was a bunch of us. It wasn't right. like one, because I'm sure people who have worked for other companies that it's not a bunch of us, you know, may have something different to say, but that's what kind of like drew me even more to it. Like it's such a casual, like everybody just getting the job done, everybody's contributing, whether you man or woman, if you have something to say, it's value. So actually in that particular arena, I have had great experiences. Okay. Even if I wasn't like the most senior person there, it's like if you can contribute, then it's good. Now, in corporate America, you know, in standard nine to fives, it's right. an entirely different situation. So, as a black woman, what has been your experience? Because we're going to touch on, I'm going to let you touch on, you know, your experience, but overall, what it's been like as a black person working in corporate America in, in, in general. But what was, I mean, what of all can you compare? If at all, can you compare the two? Not and at what all. What is the difference? So my standard nine to five, um, well, nine to fives, plural. I have more than one job. Um, what you make? <laughs> um, one of which is a, a what we call customer facing job, where you're dealing with the person literally face to face. So they're reading your body language, they're looking at you, your hair, your face, your makeup, your clothes, and they're basically calculating as you're dealing with them. So one of my jobs that I have, which is in the healthcare. Um, it's been kind of interesting. So most people think I'm younger than I am. So mm-hmm. they're like, oh, look at this little young black girl. And I'm usually pretty assertive, et cetera. So I think when I'm dealing with a certain um, group of people, a certain race of people, um, there's always this like side eye or this like, oh, you're less than competent because you're a young black woman. Can I speak to your manager? Right. And um, usually if we continue the conversation, like I'm pretty good at letting people know you know, no, I know what I'm doing. I get what you're trying to say without saying, but I'm the person to talk to, so let's just allow me to do my job. Yeah. And for the most part, that works, but there are the times where it's like, no, but if, if I think if they were to see a Caucasian male doing my same job, mm-hmm. it would be an expected, yeah, like, way more you got it. 
Okay, right. I trust you. They're not going to question They're you. They're not going to question you. They right. may even be a little bit more chummy with you. Right. But because one, I'm female, two, I'm petite, and then three, I'm black, it's like the type of job that I do is like, oh, you can't know what I need you to know. Right. You know, so that's been my experience. And then my other nine to five, it's not so much customer facing, but it's a whole lot of communication about like important things like money and things that they need. Essentially, they need what I need to give them and what mm-hmm. I have to say matters and how things will go. And um, they hear my voice, as you guys are. And I have a younger, hearing, a younger sounding voice. My name is quote unquote ethnic. So I guess to answer your question, what I deal with is a lot of prejudgments, lots mm-hmm. of them. And they come from so many angles, whether it's me being a woman me having a voice that isn't the most assertive, or me being clearly a black woman. So I think you have a couple hurdles to jump over before you can even get to your actual job. It's pretty frustrating sometimes. Okay. So you have one of those black names, basically. I mean, most people would say Lekay. Okay. And the other name that I go by are, you're not going to think I'm a white chick for sure. Right. So, yeah. I mean, so how, do you feel like you've, you know, lost out on anything in- I'm sure that I have. I'll be honest, like when I came to Atlanta, and you would think because Atlanta is like a black mecca, Mm -hmm. we forget who holds a lot of power in this city. Right. And I feel. misconception. Right, exactly. And it was funny because I read an article about how a lot of people, they said they like white face their resumes. I forget. They whitewash their resumes. Yeah. I'd say. Whereas. You've I'll done put it? my name S E A N before. Right. So um I, I, ain't even I didn't realize it was Yeah, you don't because your name is his white. government name is, is very uh <laughs> traditional. <laughs> traditional. But yeah. my um my government name is very okay, I already know who this is. So for the first time ever, when I was trying to get a job here in Atlanta, of all places that I thought I wouldn't have to, I started using an, an initial instead of my mm-hmm. actual name. So before mm-hmm. I could even get to work to be the black woman at work, I could even get the work. And I'm pretty sure it was because of that. It was a presumed, you know, oh, this is an ethnic name. And then there's so many connotations that come with that. So, yeah, I'm sure I've missed out because of it. Now, missed out by the standards of I didn't get the opportunity, but I feel like what's for me is for me. So did I really miss out? No. Nah. Mm-hmm. Look. You know, I appreciate that answer. And I feel like it's you know it was very it was very well said. But can we get to um, what I really want to ask? Have you had to deal with um, men in the office making inappropriate comments or what would you? Especially from different races. Yeah. Please have, speak have on that. Have you noticed any like suggestive, what do you mean? like the suggestive yeah. or the race stuff or both? Yeah. Um, from white men. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have to be honest. And the last, unless I just blocked it out because it was irrelevant to me, I can't really say that I've dealt with, like, let's just go with the suggestive, I guess, mm-hmm. sexual harassment, like the underhand right. tone of that. I really haven't dealt with that. But I think it's because most people that know me, or at least in a professional capacity, they, know me, they have try a, it. Right. They have, they know me to have that no nonsense. That like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. So. You go to HR. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go to HR. I may make you want to go to HR if I'm done with you. Oh, so it's just, I think I probably haven't had that experience because I give off that era of she's not the one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the other side of like racism, I think I've heard comments said here or there, like it was actually one of my coworkers we were asking him about the fire, um, myself and another African American female, and he was like, Oh, I'm scared of that part of town, I don't go down there. Mm. And I almost I literally had and a swivel my to chair. To be around. honest, I know who you're speaking of, and I caught that vibe. And I tell people all the time, like just because somebody's smiling your face. And he, he, ha, ha. Yeah. It don't just, mean a damn That don't mean thing. they don't hold certain Ooh, views about Greek. So that's one of the things we run into. Like, a lot of times we'll get real comfortable around real other groups of people. They play both sides. And we feel like, oh, they're accepting us. Give them that pass. Give them that pass. And then they, they take Stay it. Stay woke. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we, we talk about this all the time. But yeah. That's one of the things, like, I think in the workplace, it can be very misleading. And, and they know how to play the game so they well. Do. Especially in a professional capacity. Like, right. hey, hey, Ray, how are you? How and they make you feel game? like, they make you feel yes. like, dang, oh, he actually fucked Oh, did you watch the game last night? Oh, I love your hair. I don't no. play them games. Nope. If you notice me in the office, play, I don't know if you notice me. I notice. I do not. And this is not, look, I love my He's wife. He's antisocial. Man, I'm not antisocial. <laughs> I, I can kind of read the vibe of people being honest with me. Mm-hmm. And I kind of catch the vibe. Yeah, if they do too much of that, hey, you know, hey, bro, 
trying too hard. I, I or trying to, or trying to like, like you know, trying to, trying to, yeah, have your own, yeah, bro. have, have you our lingo don't, and stuff. Don't, I get what you're saying. Yes, the guy we're talking about on the first is like, are you I'm going gonna, to the Migos concert? Yeah, I, don't, don't ask me nothing about rap. <laughs> so if you black. ask me something about rap when I'm, no, don't I just, ask that's, me. Yeah. Ask me what type of music I like, and then if I tell you, we can have a conversation. Don't assume, because I'm black, I like the Migos. I don't like the Migos. Right. And shit, I'm going to the Migos concert, but that's beside the point. The point is, I don't like how they will kind of use a lot of those slick. They do a lot of cold speak. They they try to, you know, make little right. passive jokes to exactly. test you. They're going to test and exactly. see it's you. It's always really a about. test. Did y'all not seek it out? Okay. Yeah, so everything, you just got to kind of keep your, keep your, you know, your head on keep the Keep your radar on. Okay. Please, yeah, yeah be definitely. aware. That's yes. all that's awesome. Because with about. us, the main thing, with a lot, a lot of black folks, you know, we look for job security as opposed to mm-hmm. building a job for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I understand, like, we live in a system where, we're deprived economically, so we do have to kind of do we that. We are dependent. We're, we're dependent at this point, mm-hmm. but we're all trying to get self-sufficient. But get in the there. meantime, yeah, we're working for other people, and it's like we're, you know, we try our best to not do certain things. To, you can't let these people slide. Right. You can't let these people Hold slide. Hold them accountable. Black folks, you got to start going to HR. Because they right. ain't going to know when to stop. I honestly. promise you, you got to file in HR from shit that you don't even know about. You might have made a, a slight <laughs> joke somewhere, and then motherfucker ran to HR on you. I, I want you to know, black folks, if you if you had a job and you ever had a moment of uncomfortableness, report that shit, or ever, just know that person went to HR on your ass. So yep. you got to you got to stay on top of it, man. And one another thing that I noticed with sisters at the job is, and and this is why I empathize with sisters because we're going to get into that topic. Black women at work. Black women at work. I noticed that there's always a comment, and you know, you know, Bill O'Reilly made his statement about Maxine Waters in her hair. Yeah. Wig, right. It's always something about black women in their hair where white folks just make it a point, especially men. Oh, I like your hair. Make it a what point is that? to mention your hair or to mm-hmm. denigrade you based on your hair. Mm-hmm. So if you go to the job place, like I'm sure because you oh, kind of rock styles that are very, very ethnic. Okay. My hair is big and curly for those of you who haven't seen me. Yeah, it's not. Wavy white. It's not, it's uh, not what is Brazilian silky. Right. Hawaiian it's, silky. Yeah, Hawaiian silky. <laughs> it's not uh, Remy weave. Right. I don't uh, do the triple weave. <laughs> so I'm looking at like, just like for, for black women, they're always told, and I'm looking at, you know, the, the new law that says that yeah. they can di- uh, discriminate, what, discriminate against your based hair. On, on having drag bars. Exactly. And I'm looking at, okay, as a black woman, how do you feel? Knowing, you know, that have first of all, has anybody ever came to you and made a remark based on your hair? Absolutely not. All the time. Okay. What? Really? Never? So, but again, what what did y'all just ask me? I don't right. think I give off that air that you can do that. Um, now I think I've had like, but these, but these people bold nah, though. They bold. They, bold. they, they are. Don't care. They probably, are. Yeah. They are. But what I'll say is, I think my character and my work speaks louder than my hair, and my hair mm-hmm. is pretty big, so that tells you something. I have had when I've changed my hair, they're like, "Oh, you look so different," or like, "Oh, I thought that was your hair." Like I get that, like the passive, like, "So what you trying yeah. to say?" Yeah. But I've never had like, "Oh, why do you wear your hair like that?" Or, "Oh, you sure?" Like it's never like a, you should change it or this doesn't. Um, look good thing it's more of a you know okay like they just always take notes like you said it's always a conversation piece it's always you know something but it's never like bad hmm. i mean i know it happens but i haven't yeah. in the recent well i time. can say because your hair doesn't look crazy yeah right but you know what i think it's interesting what? so see rich the person we're talking about that mentioned like the, the migos concert or mm-hmm. whatever and made the comment about why oh, I don't go down. And he didn't say it to me directly. It was more of like a group conversation, but that's when I turned my chair around. But what's interesting is the person that they really tell me with, they do have like straight hair and they do have a more European look than I do. Mm-hmm. So that kind of poses the conversation, right? It's because I have the bold hair and I have a no-nonsense personality, maybe even my skin tone, versus someone who doesn't have my big hair and right. they have a lighter hue and maybe of a more chummy, mm-hmm. approachable you know what I mean? Um, personality, does that play into it? I would think yeah, so. It does. Yeah. yeah there, there's more of a, there's more, I, I don't want to say because she's, she's our partner. So, but there's more of like a, a dignified, a sense of, yeah, we're not even going to go there because she's going to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, believe there, it. I don't believe in censorship, <laughs> but okay. Yeah. No, I'm saying, um, 
just based on your hairstyle, mm-hmm. I know, you know, for if you if you're from the outside looking in, you're gonna think, okay, well she kinda she more intact with her roots. Like she kinda yeah. is the assumption. Yeah, so they're not going nine times out of ten, they're less likely to say something out of fear that you're gonna do something. Exactly. Because I'm more quote unquote rooted. Right. Right. So and, that's kind of what it is. And then I feel like, you know, if you're talking about somebody with straight hair, like, I feel like that's like that a more submissive type, right, it is. you know, uh, Because you're submitting to their exactly. pressures of how you should look. And you're doing whatever you want to do. So they're like, oh, we ain't going to say nothing to her because she's going to be her Ooh, own thing regardless. Levels it is. That's exactly, it's exactly what it is. is. The European standard of beauty. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of that, mm. I, I, I'm going to have to bring this up because I, I take issue with What happened? Um, Kendrick Lamar dropped a video. Ah. Come on. We were just talking about Kendrick last week, and I, and I love K-Dot. Shout out to K-Dot. <laughs> shout out to TDE. Shout out to Compton. Rose Clan. And he's from Florida. <laughs> Never been to Cali. <laughs> <laughs> oh but God. Kendrick Lamar dropped a video, Humble, and he had a portion of the video, and in the video, basically, he was giving props to women for rocking their, their natural hair. Giving props to women with their ass. Stretch marks. Stretch marks. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And a lot, and you know, minimizing on the makeup. Shout out to Matt for a cave. Shout out. Um, but, Sephora, Ulta. Yes. All the brands. I'm so happy you know <laughs> about hey, it. Your know girl about must all have all you up in hey. there. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sephora. Go ahead. <laughs> Shout out to Perimeter Mall. But. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Wait, go ahead. Please let it go. Damn, man. I know, right? <laughs> but I'm looking at the fact that I see a lot of black backlash from women on Twitter in regards to this video. So I kind of wanted to get your opinion on on this situation because as a woman who wears hair extensions at times. You don't gotta do your face like. See, this is what I'm talking about. You, if you even mention it, like it's a, it's like a oh nigga don't mention I don't, it. And I don't think anything is wrong with what he yeah. said. I feel like there's then, nothing wrong with what he said. Y'all are misreading my face. Okay, go ahead. Let me read your face. Um, then on top of that, you wear makeup. Then on top of that, you were talking about possibly getting ass shots. I want to know your opinion. <gasps> what did I ever? I want to get your opinion. What on did what I ever say? This? I wanted ass shots. Okay, let, let's not. No, for real. I said I would. I said that? I, I think you did. I, I think see, I, I, I Did you that. ever no, hear me say I, I was going to say aug, augment, augment your, your chest? So. Um, let me get back. Let me, let me re, re-address it. Can you ask that question again? Yes. As a woman who has hair extension at times. At times. Who wears makeup. A lot of the time. A lot of the time. A lot of the time. <laughs> He's trying to throw shade. Y'all. No, no, no. Uh, no, nah, she, she's she's a beautiful. Woman. Thanks. Uh, and who has contemplated restructuring her My body, body in some type, way? Gotcha. In a way. Mm-hmm. What is your feelings on this? On the K This madness. Well, um, so it's two parts to this, right? Okay. So when I saw the video, before I heard about the backlash, I was just like, shout out. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I know men like that. That's like, I don't care if you got stretch marks, girl. I don't care if you got a little bit of stomach. Like, so to see it on a major platform, because if your homeboy saying it, I mean, that's cool. You appreciate the love. But when it's put in front of millions, like, no, this is beautiful. I was like, damn, that's what's up. And he literally said it like, F that you got. What was the quote? You got stretch marks. I still fuck you on my couch with polo socks on. Like, he basically was keeping it extremely real. Mm-hmm. So I loved it. I was like, okay. Now, do I think every man feels that way? No, but I'm happy that he put himself out. He's trying to put it right. Make that something and, that and I love the part in the video where he shows the girl literally from filter right. to non-filter. And she looked um, better without the, without the filter. Y'all think so? Yeah. yeah, she looked better without the filter. Gotcha. So me personally, like, yes, I wear my hair natural, and I wear hair that's not mine. Um, in a previous conversation, we talked about how I'm just one of those women that I like versatility i like to switch it up um i love my mac and that's just what it is like yeah at one point when i was younger i did consider getting a breast augmentation but i think all women go to that point in their life when they're trying to find themselves and love themselves and decide where they fit and how they feel about it so 
I love the K dot video. I don't understand why everybody mad about you know him These doing that. These females just want some attention. That's all. We should we should get attention. <laughs> that's what you mean? That's all Positive it is. attention though. Yeah, they, what you what, what how you feel, Siri? I don't think nothing wrong with what he said. I think what he said is the truth. I'm and sorry, I didn't people, hear you. <laughs> I think what he said is the truth, and the only people that got something to say is the ones that feel some type of way about it. Who out here, you know, getting their boobs done, wearing all that makeup. I mean, it's nothing wrong with wearing so makeup. You think he stepped on the toes of women who? Yeah, they're gonna feel some type of way, just like we were talking about on the last show. Mm-hmm. The only people who gonna feel some type of way about it is the people who are actually out here doing it at the end right. of the day. So I mean, or have to. My- Cause it could be a choice, you get what I'm saying? Like you, it's your choice to wear makeup. Some girls look at it as a choice. Like I gotta put on this makeup. Right. I'm not going out looking looking ugly every day. Mm-hmm. So those Damn. people are the. What was that? But y'all heard what you said. But that's how they feel. That's, that's how. Is that not how they it? feel? Exactly. Uh-huh. I hear it all the time. Oh, I feel ugly without my makeup. Like. I mean, I wish we had the perspective of a woman who doesn't wear makeup. Cause I would love to have her share that with y'all. But I mean, when I'm going out and dealing with people. Like, literally, a direct dibble on people, I have on makeup. I'm not going to lie. It's not like, oh, I feel prettier. It's kind of like me putting on an outfit, like having on a, a house dress or whatever I wear around the house versus an actual outfit. That's how I look at it. Like, I'm going out and presenting myself, even if it's in a non-direct way. So, for me, a part of presentation is, you know, enhancing my beauty with makeup. Now, I'm not going to lie and say when I don't have makeup. And I don't mean, like... I mean, like, bare face, like, sweat in the gym. Like, I'm not going to lie and say I feel just as cute when I have a complete face of MAC. I feel like it does take it up a notch. It does enhance my beauty. So if that's an insecurity, I don't know. But I think it's just optics. Like, literally, if you makeup enhances your features, make your mm-hmm. eyes bigger, make your lips juicier, mm-hmm. you know, it's an enhancement. So to me, this looking at black and white enhancement is always better than non-enhancement. But, I mean, every woman has their own reason. Mine isn't out of insecurity. I just like the way it looks. I think I'm beautiful with my fro and with somebody let's, else's let's, hair. But, like you said last time, you're an anomaly. So, we're going to talk about on average. I can't what, speak what? on average. I'm not an average woman. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> What's that? Okay. I'm listening. What, what do you think? So, we get this a lot from women who, you know, they go about, you know, doing the, you know, the, the way the weave and Parents' tensions. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, that the reason that they give is that, you know, this is something that men like. Right. I true. wouldn't be doing this if men didn't pay they attention. Didn't, men exactly. Do yeah, you so. know how many men? Sorry, not to interrupt you. Mm-hmm. This hair that I have on now is much bigger and longer than my natural hair. Mm-hmm. I've had complete strangers beeline across parking lots, stores, everywhere, and been like, "Oh my God, your hair is so beautiful." Right. Now, when I rock my hair, I have guys like put their hands on my hair, like, "Oh my God, I love it natural." But when I tell you it's thirty times more men that literally complete strangers like praising my beauty with what this big hair. Man? Surprisingly, of all races, black men, white mm. men, I even have Hispanics, like, I can meet a lot. Because so it I looks see. like a natural black hairstyle. Mm. So right, exactly. You wouldn't know that it's not. Yeah, right, it's I not even know so it's not like you're, it, So it's a little bit different. So it's not like you're wearing, like, the Nicki Minaj. No, shout out to Nicki Minaj. It's we, not the European. We're not so shitting on her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it's not like. You're you know, embracing your own. Right. Like, you're embracing your, your roots. You yeah. just but have a it could be style. the argument that it's still fake. Now, rather it's a silky fake. Nah, it's different, though. It's different because you're not. That's not a European style, right? Exactly. A it, lot it of could be who, my hair. It's just not. Right. Okay. It could be yours. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Like, and that's pr- probably why. Because a lot of white men like natural women. Like, but a lot of white men love black women who wear their natural yes, styles. You see a, a white woman, a white man with a black woman is normally a natural hair type of female. Right. Mm. But here comes the argument, though, because. You could say you like it natural. Like, okay, Searich just said he didn't know my hair was not mine until I told right. him. He could have been, and he has a face, so this is not what I he was saying. I knew I just didn't say. Right. I'm sure you did. So this is my thing. Like, and it, for oh, a man yeah. to say I don't like something that's not natural, technically it's not natural. Yeah. This hair did not come out of my head, right? Mm-hmm. It represents more of an ethnic right. look, but if you just want right. to call it spade to spade, it's not my hair. It's the same as somebody putting a... Uh, weave in, right? So, uh, it's a little bit different. So, y'all do still, feel there's a difference? Yes, there is a difference. You still, like, if a woman does the locks and puts that and puts a stitching in her hair for a locks, like, mm-hmm. it's a little different. If she has braids and she's putting it, it's a little bit different because you're still. So, what you're saying is if you enhancing yourself but you're still repping the culture, it's fine. It's when you go trying to look like I wouldn't something say else. enhancing yourself because you're using a term that I, I, Wh- Whatever I, you want to call yeah, it. Because it's a little bit different. Like, just the hair is different than. If you're trying to get ass shot, that's not enhancing yourself, in my opinion. That's but, you know, altering yourself. Okay. Enhancing would mean like an upgrade or 
you're doing something one better. I get what you're altering. Yeah, I get what you're yeah. saying. Not the connotation of yeah. better or worse. I got you. Right. So, okay, so, but if I'm altering myself, okay, this is like mm-hmm. an afro. It's a curly afro, which a woman can grow out of her head naturally. Yeah. A woman can have a big ass naturally or not. So, me making my ass bigger, that's typical to black women. Right. Why is that a problem? Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. So, enhancing your hair in the way of how black women's hair look, meaning afro, big, curly, not the silky. Right. What about enhancing your ass to be what some women of color have, well, a big ass? Some. What's the difference? What's the difference? The some difference, women have long hair and some don't. Right. Some. So you're going. You're going under the fucking knife, or getting shots in your ass, detrimental to your health. So that's the difference. There's a big difference between. So you rather date a woman that what, has? We don't know the science behind what happens years from now with the ass shots. We're just. So you think about her health. I'm thinking about <laughs> her health and the fact that it's going. That's go a crazy. more serious transition. That's a serious transition. Hair. Okay. It's like bone reconstructive surgery on your face to try to look European in your nose. That's just taking it too far. That's You're too going, far. that's not enhanced. That's completely altering. Okay, so see, Rich, if your girlfriend was like, I love mm-hmm. myself, you know, I think I am the bomb. I just want a bigger ass. What would you have to say about it? Get in the gym. Oh, you straight. Get in the gym. The gym we'll, is the we'll only fix give that. you so we'll much. Fix that. <laughs> we'll fix that. I got you. <laughs> I said, exactly. see, Rich. Oh, I'm going to ask you next. We'll though. fix that. That's all I'm going to tell Not really, though. You can tone up the ass, but she what, let's say she goes from, like, very modest. First life. of all, like, I'm... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to tell her she's beautiful anyway. It ain't about what's meant to be. It's about she wants that. Okay, but I accept her for the way she looks. It's not so about I feel, you. I mean, but at the end of the day, if I'm, if I'm her dude, like, it should really even... It shouldn't even matter, like, because at, at the end of the day, like you said, girls look for acceptance from other men. That's why they do a lot of these things. But if you already got a guy that accepts you for who you are, like, why does it even matter? Because it's not about you. I'm not trying to be combative. I'm literally See, and saying. It, and look, this is what we're talking about, right? What? what we're not talking about last week and today, we're talking about the the argument that men, you just said, this is what men like. They come to me, they give me more attention based on what I do. Like these alterants, whether it's the hair, the ass, whatever. But then y'all will turn around. That's what I'm saying. And say, you're first of all, Oh, this ain't for you. Don't tell us about what we should do with our body because it's not for you. It's not for your consumption. Right. But then you'll, in the same breath, say that, oh, well, I wouldn't be doing it if men didn't show me more I don't attention. think it's the same breath. I think it's about two it different is. women. No, it's it two is, different though. women. There's the one woman that literally does mm-hmm. it because she gets more attention. That's it. And then there's the other woman that's like, well, I just like this. Where the, I've talked about it. I'm that woman. It's like I have people tell me all the time that like me in a certain way, but I'm like, okay, that's cool, right. but I that's want this. It has yeah. nothing, it's almost Would you outside. say that you're, you're the norm of the women who are doing I'm this? not, but I'm just saying his answer was, if I'm the man and you guys do this for men, for men, then why do it if I'm telling you you're fine without it? And I'm telling him, if it's a girl like me that's not doing it for you, I just want to change me, then right. that's... And I will say this. What? Because we, we dodged the psychological seat okay. last week. Okay. And I told you I would bring this back up. Bring it back. So why do you feel that you need to do it? Exactly. Because You're I, insecure. Look, I feel like that's I'm insecure telling, as yeah, fuck. it is. But but because I, I don't want to attack. Said, I, I don't want. I know. I don't want to attack the women in that nature. I don't want to make it's it. It's not an attack. Because, because like I feel like, like cause man, are, like, I feel like, like okay, I don't understand why girls like when they okay, if you got your guy telling you that shit, like why does why does that really matter to you? Because other men have been telling them. Okay, but that's not your man. Know, like that's what I'm saying. Like I don't understand. I think like that's fucked up when girls think like that. I honestly do. Because like if your dude care about you, that's all that matters. Like what does shit? What does that matter? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? I'm listening. But go ahead. Like I, I just don't. I don't. I don't. Do so that. you feel like if a woman alters her body, it's due to insecurity on some level. Yeah. Because for what? Your God, God gave you that body. Like I mean, embrace that shit. Look, just think about it. Why are they getting an ass shot if they don't feel there's a problem? Exactly. It's insecurity. That's what an insecurity why is. Why just not why can't it just be something normal? Like, okay, I just don't I don't have big boobs. Like, okay, whatever. I mean, I mean I, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't really trip on women whether they have a fat ass or they have I think I can right. I think I'm making a true statement when okay. I say all of us sitting at this table are a little bit out of the norm. Me as a woman, we you are. both as men. So I get it. I get your point. 100%. I get that there's cool ass niggas out there. Look, right. you, yeah, but well, I mean, that's it. Fucked so up. that's why. And so there's plenty of coons on both sides. And not even as cool and just men who they don't know. They weren't raised to love a woman and I her wasn't... natural 
um state and then out and then that's where that's another thing like i'm used to my mom like i see how my mom looking everything you accept she teach me to accept a woman for who she is i mean you're not gonna sit there and try to change her you supposed to make her feel like she the most beautiful thing in the world and actually feel that way exactly not on some fugazi shit like and not a lot of men do and it's a lot of women who don't love themselves a lot of i mean it, it's deep it goes deep we have to do an episode a, about it one day right but issue. that's the realness so that's why that's but the realness. when somebody is coming and i understand some people don't want to be woken up right when you have somebody trying to push that as a message like yo i, I want y'all to accept y'all african features as right. beautiful don't come at the nigga on twitter exactly. that's all i'm saying say that again don't come at that nigga. Wait, what yes, was he saying? We say saying nigga though? on Back Talk podcast. As a term of endearment. So As a term of endearment. What did he say on Twitter, this, though? Huh? What did the dude say on Twitter? <laughs> no, I'm saying on Twitter. You're talking about don't the females come, that came the, from The women him. who were coming from him, the black feminists who were coming from him. Oh, coming for Kendrick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. We, we're, not, we're not here for that. Yeah, I don't really understand it. Like... I don't understand it. I feel like do what you feel like you need to do with your body. But I'm always playing devil's advocate, I guess, because I always see both sides of it. I get the women that are like, you can't tell me what to do regardless. Whether I want to be natural or I want to be all But no, we're not going to keep doing that. See, we can't keep letting people slide on that. Slide on it's what? not, oh, I'm going to do it regardless. No, why are you doing this? We have to start looking, breaking ourselves down psychologically and ask, what are the, what are the, the conditions that we suffer from today? Okay. All of this stuff is stemming from past, uh, you know, past. Because somebody trauma. was putting that mm-hmm. image in your right. head. Somebody Someone's else put that image in definitely. your head to where why Most you feel definitely. like this you're not beauty. enough. Right. Why the? And honestly, we were joking about tiny earlier. Honestly, I find something in every woman that I can say that is beautiful about them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm not attracted to her physically, I can say that's there's different. something. There's something about her that I like. But that's the difference. Liking it and being attracted to it is two different things. And right. most women want you to be attracted to them. And yeah, sometimes it don't work like, like that. A lot of so times it don't work that way. Like, a lot of times. something about life that we have to accept. But certain things we not going to like about ourselves, we can't change. Okay. But we can learn to love what it is that we were given. Because we were given something for a reason. Uh-huh. So, you know, whether it's a flat ass, maybe... Shit, I mean, maybe that helps you swim faster. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get the fuck I'm out saying, of here. But I'm saying, like, really? there's a little more aerodynamic. But, like, there's something about you. There's the, Whatever your attributes are, You there's something that about what, what it is that you have that makes you the person that you are. So for you, Kay, you don't have the... Breasts. <laughs> but For maybe all of you who were wondering. Okay. But maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe there's a brother out there who, you know. And I feel like it's still if he still embraced that, she's going to be like, oh, like I still need bigger breasts. Yeah. And, and Wait, what? No pause. To... You feel like if I have a man that embraces my size A cups, that yeah, I still would not. You still, you still might. Oh, I still think I need to uh, mm. get them bigger. Who said I? I said I at one know, point in my saying. life. I'm just, no, oh, so you don't feel like that no more? No, okay. I, I would have done it. What you mean? Okay. So, you yeah. So you change your mind. Ma, exactly. I learned to love myself. Well, part of it was I'm not getting cut up like that. But second part. So fear. No, 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 no. Because my courage is always more than my fear. <laughs> but what I'm saying is I literally, because every woman knows that you go to that point of like looking at yourself. You know what I mean? Like, okay, hmm, I can tweak this, I can tweak that. But it's just a thought. It was a passing thought. Like, it wasn't that deep for me. Like, at this age, either you got it or you don't. Like, right. that's just what it was for me. So, if I had a man that embraced it, I would love that he embraced it, but it wouldn't change how I feel about myself. You feel like my man should be my co-sign to how I feel about my bias? No, nah, he saying. shouldn't. But he should help you feel some type of way. Like, if your man yourself. don't love the way that you look and accept all of how you look, and that ain't your man. Got it. He belongs to the streets. Amen. Got it. Shout out to all my street niggas out there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Y'all see what I gotta oh do with it? <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, just in, in that conversation, I would say I think you should give a PSA to all the black women listening, since y'all have, have so much, have so many feelings about black how we should feel. Black, black women are amazing, man. I, I don't want to. I don't want you to feel like because I know a lot of you are tired of men telling you what to do, even though a lot Amen. of you grew up without a man in the house. Amen. So I don't know how you're tired of men telling you what to do. But Ooh. I will say, <laughs> I will say you see, that that's some backwards ass shit. <laughs> 
I will say that. <laughs> no, and we oh, make jokes man. about this, but in all seriousness, a lot of people in our community don't grow up with fathers. So we look at men trying to be leaders or trying to, you know, guide us in a way. The family structure, we're trying to guide the family in a direction. We look at that as something negative. Like the man shouldn't be telling me what to do, but, you know, it is a joint in, in a marriage or in a relationship. It's a joint thing. So while, why are you making faces? I'm trying to see where you're going. Yeah. You know, what? I'm listening. Style. Go ahead. Don't do that. Yeah. So in a, in a family structure, it's joint. And so, yes, a man making a decision for you or with you, that doesn't necessarily mean he's telling you what to do. Like, and I feel like a lot of, a lot of women kind of look at it that way. And it, and it, do you not agree or disagree? I mean, do you disagree? Agree? Like, if a man tells you, hey, K, you know, clean them dishes up. I've been looking at them since Thursday, Sunday. What you doing? <laughs> I wish you guys could see our camera woman's face. <laughs> her face is probably how I feel It right depends now. on how he said yeah, it, too. It's all in your tone. Says, like, That's the thing. A lot of times, let me tell you something. A, a woman who keeps it 100% with herself, I think women don't mind being led by their men. The problem is we don't trust most of y'all to lead us. Whether that's leading us to tell us to wash some more, dishes, say more. whether that's leading us, you know, to keep the house clean. How yeah, we should then why out. is that your man if you can't trust him leading you? Say Amen. Come on now. Amen. And that's exactly it. I that's say that all the time. Why are women with men who they don't trust? I mean, this is a whole other subject, but that's just what it is. I mean, yeah. Like if my man tell me, oh, wash the dishes, he going to know how to talk to me because if that's my man, he knows how to deal with me, he knows how to talk to me. Like, so I'm not going to worry about him saying it the wrong way. He's going to say it in a way that's respectful, and I'm going to receive it, and I'm going to take care of it. Right. But a lot of times we so don't. Do it. Yeah, if that's my dude. Yeah, of course. Because if you're my dude, yeah, if you're my dude, it's a, <laughs> if you're my dude, it's an assumption that we are, we have a respect level. We know each other. We love each other. Like, that's, that's the foundation I'm talking off of. Not some random ass dude. Like, why would he even be there if he's a random dude? So if it's my dude, we in the house, we chilling this Sunday, the dishes been up since Thursday. That's my slip up, because I feel like, both people should keep the house clean. I'm not on some old woman, you got to clean the house type shit. But as I man, you ask, I'm going to do it. It's done. That's again, that is K4. <laughs> IG at K4. <laughs> I'm just trying to bring out your best attributes. So Wait, you ain't got to. They are here. Stop playing that's games. the thing. Like, that's, I'm one of those women that I know how to. I, I've made a post about it like in the past. Like, I have no problem playing number two. I, I know how to, you know, chill, be led. I know how to. Play, be submissive. I know how to do all that. It's do I it's trust about you? you. Right. To, exactly. And a lot of these women are dealing with men. men. Aren't equipped to leave. Exactly. Not so I'm not going to let you. Exactly. But a lot of women, it, because they want a man or because they like, they don't yeah. know how to look for those things. So they deal with men who they don't trust. And that's why it's the whole, that's, it's a whole like. And that goes issue. all the way back to they have a man in their life. Or they up. did, but that man wasn't shit either. They may have True had a man well. in life, True but he well. never showed. So it's levels of this shit. So True yes, well. I'm a strong woman. I'm very independent. I have my own voice. I know how to speak up. I'm assertive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I know how to be the opposite of all those things if it's somebody to my left or to my right that I could trust to do it for me. And that's just what it is. There's a lot of us that just need to get on that couch and speak what it is that's on our mind, like what we're going through, what we've been through. Yep, like unpack we, it all. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't do that enough. Right. Yeah. I'm not gonna have you fucked up and I'm fucked up. You gotta leave me. I need somebody that you know I can trust to you know? That's just what it is for me. Shit. It's a lot of men who let their women leave them now. Mm. I'm Shout not saying that's wrong. Shout but... out to Kendra mm. get your paper. Oh, yeah. Come on, get man. That's paper. That's different. That's paper. <laughs> that's paper. But yeah, so So don't fuck with a man you don't trust. End of the day. If Thanks you trust them, you trust them. That's it. If I trust you, I trust you. That's going to be across the board. With my money, with my body, mm -hmm. with my heart, all of that. If I don't, I don't. And you'll know. If I do, you do. And we can just rock. And it's cool. So we love to hear from you guys. Please hit us up. Um, our talk back segment is essentially where we look at your responses, your comments on the videos and the SoundCloud, et cetera. If you have something to say, you like what we have to say, just talk to us. Um, we will shout you out, your handle or whatever your name is, in our talk back segment. So let us know how you feel. Good back show. talk, episode three. Episode three. iTunes podcast. Shout out to Apple. <laughs> Stitcher. You can listen to us on Stitcher. Also, 
Go to the YouTube and drag this because just search B A K T A L K on all of your major platforms. You'll find us. All right. Thanks well, thank for listening. You.